hello everybody welcome in welcome in we are running uh some dungeons and dragons tonight we are on episode 65 i believe right yes 65 of adventures in wild mount say home brew wild mount campaign um right now there's a, an, an undead army that is uh taking over pretty much the entire world um at the hand of saz tam and our players are in grim gallier um as for the actual stuff that's been going on recently i will let them inform you uh just to let you know what else i got coming up uh tomorrow is my last stream until thursday so tomorrow 7 p.m we have a four player game of baldur's gate 3 going on we're in act three uh, i think we still got a few more sessions left before we're done but i really hope you'll join me for that um so without further ado we are oh we're we're just about to start thank you for the raid sprig leaf how's it going my guy i hope your your stream went well hell yeah man uh you're just in time i literally was just introing it and uh, i'm gonna get my players to uh explain what has been going on recently but the the overall arc right at the moment uh is actually we had a uh, we're in the critical role world of wild mount uh there <laughs> hey thank you for the follow um there has been a uh war going on uh basically taldore or sorry uh exandria is uh been taken um and more than a third of wild mount has been taken and <clears throat> it's all along the edges so the undead army is slowly squeezing in um I don't know, about a month or two ago, um, real life time, they actually uh, were able to stop the invading army from taking over Grimgallier. It was close, but they made it. But we're about to start, so I'm going to let them tell you what is going on. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the game. Hello, hello. So we have... Uh, well, I just got raided, so we have a lot of people. Anybody want to uh, give them a little rundown on where we're at and what's happening right now? Yeah, I got uh, some notes from last session saying that Ash and Bettany went to the kitchen and made soup. Uh, and then the party went back to the room after interrogating the dead body of... Um, Diwalia, and we interrogated Deladius, the dwarf, who did not appreciate our interrogation at all. And uh, Spoonbreaker prayed to his god and had a vision of Warren, who told us to go east. Uh, and then we went to the weird jeweler, who is super weird. Uh, we got some resources. We went to Arcane Bob for more resources. And then um, we had dinner. And that was pretty much it, I believe. We ended uh, right before the funeral um, of the citizens of Grimgallier. Uh The funeral is the next day. Um, you guys did also... Yeah. Uh, Wabu um, did some some summoning and whatnot. Uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned that. I had a blanked part out there. But yeah. Um, so with, with all of that uh, going on, um, I would say, you guys, it, it's getting pretty late. Um anybody got anything they wish to do before uh, you guys get your long rest in for the night nothing on my side uh, nope nothing here I'm good alright you guys settle in for your long rest uh, let's see we have where Zeke was at he's not in the game Mr. Wabu. I'm in the game. What do you mean? Uh, oh. There's that fix it. My token changed. Oh, there it is. Spoonbreaker wasn't in the game yet. My bad. Oh. Okay. So, uh, I believe Sulamine and Spoonbreaker both had visions. Yes? The other three of you have not. Wabu, yours is Melora. Yes? Um... Mine is uh, Sahanin. Sahanin. 
the honey. Oh, I'm at the wrong ones. That's that's the evil gods. My bad. But didn't I? I had a vision, Savage. Yesterday or last game? Uh, I don't think. No, it was not last game. It was the game before. I had one, and then I, I fell into a stupor afterwards, and I right. was exhausted. Yes. So I, I assume you're just trying to get through everyone's one, basically. Yeah. So I've yeah. Had one. Richter. As you all lay down to rest, yours is a restless night. Dreams parade through your head. Not like the normal dreams you would normally have of finishing brilliant books and learning all there is to learn. A challenge? But something strange, something different, something dark seems to be at the forefront of your mind. You seem to be atop Grimgallier, on top of the mountain that stands inside, sitting on the very peak, covered in snow, the air is thin. But as the cold starts to get to you, and you start to shiver. You're shunted far to the east. You overlook a... A city full of undead. You suddenly shoot down through the ground. And you're in darkness. But you feel your feet hit rock. You feel the dust pick up around you as your feet touch down. What would you like to do? Um, what do I see? What does Richter see? Nothing. It is pitch black. Um, he's going to cast light sure. what are you casting it on um instead I'm gonna cast mage hand because I don't have light ready or that cantrip at all in fact <laughs> wrong character <laughs> eh wrong game mm hmm and I'm going to just cast Mage Hand and send it out into the dark and take a couple steps forward as well as I do this. Sure. Your Mage Hand, you, you hear something clank as it seems to bump into something. How far away? Well, you can't see, so give me a perception relying on, uh, on hearing. Merely about five feet ahead of you. Uh, well, I walk a little bit forward, and do I see my mage hand? No, you can't see anything. As I walk forward, though, uh, towards the sound where my mage hand would be, as I get closer, do I see my mage hand? No, you cannot see your mage hand. It, 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 it's pitch black. Your, your dark vision does not work. It's a dream. Gotcha. Um... Yeah, I just I walk forward. I just keep walking forward a little bit to see what's going on there. Yeah, as as you kind of walk forward, um, putting your hands out, um, feeling for anything you might bump into, um, you, sir, find an armor stand with a heavy set of armor on it. Uh, taking a look across it, is it are there any symbols or anything weird about it? As you kind of drag your hand along it, you realize that this this strange item, um, it seems to clank as you move it, and yet it seems to be made of almost silk. You kind of like, you know, uh, you feel one of the straps attached to it, and it's, it's light like a feather. 
but then as you release it and it hits back against some of the uh, the rest of it clunk as you continue to caress over it and feel it you come to what feels like almost a stitching in it you run your hand over it you believe that this is probably the mark of Ayun as you run your hands across the stitching it seems to feel as if it is a pair of open eyes crowned with a third open eye uh Richter will call out and ask uh, what is the meaning of all this? And you continue get... to kind of feel the, the sigil. You get no response. However, as you, you continue to feel and you, you take up some more of it in your hand. You're suddenly shunted straight back up. And then once you're about a few hundred feet in the air, you get shunted directly west. Going at what seems hundreds of miles a minute. Before you stop dead. Above a town. Seems to be laid in between two large mountains. Walking throughout the town, you see what seem to be humanoid creatures. Unlike the other town that was full of undead, this one seems more at ease. You see what looks to be possibly fresh recruits going through the motions of the training programs people walking around and then your vision changes as you as you fly straight downward thinking you're going to go back through the ground again you instead end up in a small library hmm. uh, Richter's going to immediately start to like look for a book to pick up and examine it Give me a perception. Twenty-two. Okay. You managed to um, find that most of this library contains books on the art of warfare. Um, histories of weapons and major conflicts however as you're kind of thumbing through some of these something else catches your eye it seems to almost have a dark energy surrounding it What is it? What does it look like? As you go, well, it's uh, uh it's purple bow. It's like got a purple cover. Um, it seems to have a couple iron bands um, around the the back binding. However, it's on a shelf, so you can't exactly get a very good look at it without getting closer. Yeah, I'm doing that climbing the shelf, getting right to that book. Okay. As the book comes within reach, you go to reach for it. And suddenly something catches your attention. It's explosions outside. You see fire rising up into the sky. 
You hear the uh, shouts of dying men and women and children fleeing. You hear men screaming, Run for your lives! All is lost! When uh, Richter hears this, he's just going to start to climb the bookshelf even faster, kind of scrambling to get to what he wants. And as you do, you rush up this bookshelf, up to about the eighth shelf. And as you're reaching for the purple book, you're yanked back out of the library. Give me a on save as you slam back into your body in bed. That's a shame, bro. <laughs> Plus 10, you roll a 13. That hurts. Yeah. As you slam into your body, you, you fall directly out of bed. And uh, you, you try to raise your head, but you're far too tired. And you pass back out on the floor. This cold stone of your room. Ash. We. Oui. Is Bethany with you? Damn straight she is. <laughs> All right. So you also begin to have a rest scene, sleep, and at first you can almost hear Bethany's voice. Ash, Ash, wake up. You're having a nightmare. And it just kind of almost slows to uh, almost a dull um, dull roar in the background. As you too are shunted to the east, down through the dirt and the mud, and into a pitch black room. Uh... Do I have my pouch with me or my bag with me? Yes, you do. You have all of your belongings. Hello? Yes, you have all of your belongings. Okay, I would like to to use my tinder box and um chisms and light a torch. Well, light a torch, you manage to find your tinder box. And you light it. Around you are shelves of, of strange items. Armor stands of armor. Shields hung on the wall. Weapons lying in racks. Sorry, I'm opening your set. Anything. Yeah, it's fine. Ah, very nice. Okay. Something specific, however, catches your eye. On a table, there seems to be this very tiny stand. Seems to simply be a needle upon this stand. I will move closer to investigate. Sure, as you look at it, you're curious why all of these strange, probably rare items seem to be in one spot, and yet this one particular small item looks no different than a needle. It seems to be on a table with a stand all its own, propped up. And as you, you take a better look at the stand, you see... There seems to be some sort of symbol or emblem on it. It looks like a gold coin with a woman's pro profile embossed upon it. Do 
and I'm going to touch it. So you know that this is uh, the symbol of Avandra. However, as you go to touch it, you are shunted back up above the city of the undead, back to the west. And you also see a town sitting between two mountains. A land of undead to the east of it. As you look over top of this town, You are sent directly into what looks to be some sort of tavern, but around you there seem to be higher born people, those of money. Some of them are wearing um, Dwendelian Empire colors, others Probably wealthy merchants and businessmen. But as you take a look around this particular tavern, excuse me. As you take a look around this particular tavern, you notice there's a little something more to it. There's a lot more gambling going on here than usual. And for the first time, you look up. And you see what you would know to be... See, what's... You look up and notice... Uh, what you believe would probably be a... Large statue to your goddess. Vondra. seems to be a coin spinning above her open hand. I approach the statue. She looks upon you. The statue slowly turns its head. You can hear the stone cracking as it does. And she smiles. And as the statue smiles, what looks to be blood starts to flow from the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And at that moment, the front end of the building is caved in, an explosion. As you begin to feel the heat and the force from this explosion, you too are shunted directly back into your body in your bed. As you wake, give me a con save. Jesus. Okay. 20? Yeah. You, uh, you're, you're a little tired um, as you wake up uh, in the morning, and Ash is still seems to be trying to shake you awake, and as you shunt into your body, uh, it startles her. Oh, Ash! Ash, what what happened? I, I've been trying to wake you for ten minutes. You you, you were having a nightmare or something. You you were you were shaking. And I'm pretty sure you were starting to scream. We must go east. Soon. Uh so I figured you'd probably be leaving after the funeral today. Will we get to see each other again? Oh, I hope to see you at home soon. When this war is over. She smiles. Well, I still have two years left in my my contract, but maybe after that's over, I can come be with you. I hope this war will be done by then, but if not, I'll meet you there. Uh, 
um she kind of relaxes and like um lays next to you with her her head on your chest and um she seems to be ready to to go back to sleep are you wanting to go back to sleep or you want to get up and do something uh what time is it uh it's probably about six uh six o'clock in the morning i'd say And out of habit of my team members, would I rec- would I know if others would be awake by now? I mean, you guys uh, sound like y'all like went right to bed after everything, the summoning and so on, so on was over. So it's probably like, I mean, they probably got their eight hours by by seven. Uh, okay, so I will. Kiss the top of her head and uh, shift out of bed and just start putting um, all my, I guess, my like, start putting my weapons and stuff on um, to head to, to breakfast. Okay. As for the rest of you, except for Richter, about 7 o'clock in the morning, you all begin to wake up. Anybody in particular want to do anything first? I mean, Wabu, you probably got to prep your spells, but anything else for anybody? As long as I get breakfast and rations for the road, I think uh, I'm happy. Yeah, I was going to say, I think just some supplies to keep us alive. Cool, cool. Ash, are you out of pocket ham or something? I am never out of pocket ham, thank you very much. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it was a huge fucking ham. And now I have cheese as well, because the kitchen staff was amazing, and bread. But I wouldn't say they're amazing, you know, I'm pretty sure you just scared can, the shit out of them. One could never be, you know, too greedy on pocket ham and other things to keep one going in a battle. Just saying. In a battle? Everybody's just pulling out ham on the battlefield, just stuff in their mouth, they're swinging swords and shit. <laughs> That's how the Goliath barbarians fight, don't you know? I, it's I, one I feel swing, like wrong. ham in the mouth. Just don't joke on the ham. Alright, um, Sulamine, how about you? Yeah, morning toilet, getting up, taking a nice bath, applying cologne, making sure my hair is perfect. Yeah, getting all prettified, putting on prettified. your, your fifty thousand dollar fucking diamond necklace. Or yeah, I'm gonna keep that in the bag. I don't wanna, don't want to get too snazzy, you know. Fair enough. Yeah, you guys all all settled down for breakfast, and um, neither Delatus or or Under Baron. Or, I just had him. Where's his name go? Under Baron. Dummeroff seems to be there. However, as you guys sit down to a large meal, there is a note um, placed on the table by one of the guards. Uh, Under Baron uh, Dummeroff asked me to be handing this over to you. I'll take it in my greasy bacon hand. Yeah, you take it in your greasy bacon hand. Um, there's a seal on it with uh, what looks to be uh, the Grimgallier stamp. I will crack open the seal and look at it, but I'm not going to read it. Okay. And as you I'm going to do... grunt. And I'm going to say, hmm, words. And I'm going to pass it to somebody smarter. Who are you passing it to? Uh, I don't know. Who's sitting next to me? I don't know. Who the fuck somebody... you want sitting next to you? Who are you handing it to, man? Just, just tell me who you're handing it to, and that's who's sitting next to you. I'll, I'll uh, pass it to Richter. All right. I'm not there. Oh, right. Richter's not there. 
That's right, because he's unconscious. Oh, that's okay. So, uh, I don't know, Suleiman, I'll pass it to him. Sounds good. I will take it and hold it askance and look at the grease prints on it and try and read it without getting grease on my hands. As you read it, um, you see that it says Stormforged. The funeral will be at about noon today behind the Citadel. I hope to see you there. You can bring your griffins if you want, if you want to leave straight from there. I know you're you're busy. I will see you then. I'll read that out loud to the party so that everyone's up to speed. It's there at least. And as you guys are reading, and uh, he, he, sorry, Sula means reading it to you all. For the first time, you guys notice Richter isn't coming down for breakfast. Now, it's not too unlike him. I mean, he does prefer books over, you know, often he'll just grab a snack and go back to his books. But something doesn't quite feel right. And Ash and Sulamine, both of you had a vision last night, although you haven't told each other. But each one of you, or each of you begin to think there might be something wrong. It sounds like we should go check on Richter. I thought he would have been awake by now, but... I can't... Could somebody really be that in love with a necklace? Sulamine has the necklace. It's Sulamine's necklace. Richter's oh, just... Yeah, but Richter passed out when? When he saw Sulamine's necklace in the, in no, the mirror, Su wasn't it? Sulamine had... Oh, that's right. Sulamine... Yeah, Sulamine had his vision. Sorry. Uh, yeah? It was... Oh, yeah. Ash, you're the only one that had a vision besides Richter last night. My apologies. I'm getting confused already. Okay. It's going to be a good game. I can tell. <laughs> um, Yeah. Ash, you realize you had a vision last night, and um, I believe a couple of the other characters had mentioned theirs um, the day before. And you start to feel it's a little strange that Richter's not here. Okay, so I will mention to Sulamin that I had uh, a vision last night. And because he had mentioned his vision at, uh, what was it? We were still at Bob's at the time, right? When he finally woke up. Um, but he had passed out afterwards. And uh, maybe we should go check on Richter because maybe he had the same sort of reaction to his um, his vision. If, or maybe something really is wrong. Let's go check. As you guys stand up, um, Sakura says, uh, one moment. Sulamine, Wabu, uh, I am not one for funerals. Would you mind if I head out with Baka and Buck? Is it Taliana? I don't know, but Buck's a more catchy name. I kind of like it. With a PH. No, it, it's exactly. Baka. Baka is Wabu's helper. No, he's making a joke of the fact that you said fuck. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. One of them helper. days, boys. One of them days. Nailed it. Yeah, I think it is Taliana. Yes. W would you mind if I took uh, the two of them back to Blumenthal, get them introduced to the others, and maybe start getting them set up. Uh, yeah, can we also get her in touch with Bethany so Bethany will eventually be able to find the address as well so that they know where they're going, where, she knows where she's going, and such. She looks at you, Ash. 
Uh, I mean, I could, but I assume you're going to want to say goodbye. Why do you not just tell her? I don't remember the address. I just live there. It just tell numbers, her the words, Blumenthal Mansion. It's it's the only mansion. I'll just shrug and walk away then. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um. She kind of like, uh, as, as uh, who's all going to check on Rector? Just uh, Ash and Sulamine? Yep, I'll go. All right. Wabu, how about I'm you? I'm going to go. Just, I'm going to go. Yeah. All right. Wabu, how about you? You staying? Um, yeah, I'll stay and, and, and just happily eat some food. Sure. Phoenix will hang out with you, too. Sounds good. Uh, the other three start to head off. And. Until you go to Blumenthal, that is the last you will see of them. Um, I mean, Taliana um, just kind of gives you a, a nod, Sulamin. Doesn't really say much, but uh, I mean, you guys have known each other long enough. As for Baka, Wabu, Baka looks at you. Well, guess I'll be on my way then. Wabu just like smiles dumbly and waves. Bye, see you soon. She rolls her eyes. Yeah, guess so. And she starts to head off with uh, Sakura. The rest of you, other than Wabu and Phoenix, uh, you guys head to Richter's room. And as you arrive there, you guys listen at the door you hear nothing and then suddenly you hear rustling of uh, a sheet on the bed but it's not a I'm gonna bust in yeah all right so you, you just kicking the door open oh yeah I'm 100% thinking he's being mobbed or something you walk in to Jesus Christ Richter you bust this door in, um, and on the ground before you, uh, buck-ass naked, is Richter, shaking. Is he wearing shoes? He's not wearing shoes. Oh, I never wear shoes. I'm a, I'm a halfling. However, I will allow one of you to do a medicine check. Please not me. <laughs> Whoever wants to do it. First person to roll a medicine check gets it. Because we all stand there and stare at his body. I'll do it. All right. Just leave me. Apparently. Hold up. It ain't gonna be me, because I can't. <laughs> You, are, you already fought. Why, if you, you didn't want to do it, why'd you roll it? It's too late. You got an eight. Because nobody else was rolling it. I was ah, a... he's fine. <laughs> I'm just going to walk out. All right. Ash, Ash just looks at his shaking body, uh, barely uh, a sheet on him, um, just shaking on the ground. And she, oh, he's fine. And she walks out. Spoonbreaker, you can give me a medicine check. Your halfling friend is having a full-blown seizure. Uh, I'm gonna find a See, stick. I told you he's fine. He's having a seizure. Or some some sort of long, sturdy, not super round ob or thick object to keep him from choking on his tongue and biting it off. Hmm. Uh. So you managed to find a fuck castle bedroom. 
something that would be thin enough to fit in his mouth, probably not break his teeth. You you scramble around, and you are at first unable to find something until you manage to think his clothes have to have a coin purse. You grab his small coin purse, you dump out what coins are in it, and you stick this, um, you, you kind of roll up this, uh, this piece of leather pouch, and you kind of like shove it into his mouth. Um, it's hard to get in there, but you do get it in. And after a few moments, <laughs> really? <laughs> after <laughs> fucking guy, after a few moments, uh, the, the the seizure kind of uh, abates, and Richter, you you start to open your eyes. You have two levels of exhaustion. You barely keep your eyes open. You feel weak and extremely sore. And other than the vision, you remember nothing. I uh, open my eyes and kind of look around and just kind of be like, what the hell is going on? What is everyone doing here? And, and then I probably notice uh, what's going on and grab some sheets and try to grab some robes or something. So, as you go to reach first, like, uh, the, the closest thing to you, um, you, you do find that your feet, uh, kind of have, a, a bit of the bed sheet wrapped around them, and you're trying to reach it. Um, unfortunately, as you try, due to the exhaustion and the aftermath of a seizure, um, you, you kind of reach for it, and then you just kind of, like, lay back and like your your eyes are barely open you're you're conscious but um you are completely out of it yeah richter kind of grabs his head and he goes, ah, oh my god my head splitting headache and then he kind of starts to try to fix his hair as well as he lies back in bed but does a terrible job of it Um, you, you do manage yeah. to spit out the leather pouch, by the way. Okay, good. Or else all of that was really muffled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it just going to slowly but surely put on his robes. Uh, he's not going to put on his armor. Um... He'll just put on his robes this time around, so he's not going to put on his breastplate. Oh, fuck, that's right. That's right. You have a breastplate. You wear medium armor. That's right. <laughs> oh, man, that kind of sucks for me. Fuck, We've talked going? about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I just... <laughs> Your fucking next artifact piece. I do also wear robes. Just not really. Okay. Alright. But as you guys watch uh, Richter try and crawl himself back into bed, uh, he, he manages to get up there. Um, his dingleberries are kind of swinging in the breeze as he, you know, uses like, you know, it kind of crawls on all fours to get back into the bed. Get a uh, very wonderful view. But he gets back up into the bed and he, he pulls the sheet over him. Are you trying to fight to stay awake or are you just letting your eyes close again? Mm, I'm going to fight to stay awake. He's going to essentially try to get dressed, just really slowly. Yeah, and uh, you have two of the three who came with you still standing in the room. What y'all doing? Just... I'm in the hall because that guy's naked. That, that's why I said two of three. Rector is going to say that he's have to hungry make as hell. All over my eyes as he gets dressed and when he's dressed uh, or when he's I will watch him himself. get dressed the entire way just to make sure he doesn't fall over or anything 
maintain eye contact. Such a nice friend. <laughs> oh my god! Always looking out. Always looking out for us. Um. Yeah. It, it, it takes a couple minutes. He he gets you know um his his clothes on and whatnot, and um as he tries to get up, he kind of stumbles a little bit, and you guys realize he's probably gonna need some help getting there to get some food. I'll help him down. As the three of them come out the door, Ash. I can carry the little one. I appreciate it. My uh, movement speed is halved, and I have 25 movement speed. So would that be 15 rounding up for this? I mean, if she's carrying you, then... But in general? Um, yeah, we'll go with that. I'm not sure if it's like... It technically would be twelve point five. Yeah, it'd be twelve point five. We'll, we'll round up. I like to round. I also round I lost the my. <laughs> I lost my level of exhaustion because it was a long rest, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. Just making sure. Yeah, I uh, I graciously accept the ride. And... Pocket halfling. Woo. If there's ham there, I'll probably snack. <laughs> You're not actually in her pocket. <laughs> like... If it's nearby. <laughs> yeah, give me a perception relying on smell. When does Ash not have food on her, by the way? Uh, she's carrying you and your head's kind of lolling. Uh, the smell of ham from her pocket starts to waft. I, uh... I gesture to it and to Ash, and I say, may I? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, and I, I enjoy some pocket ham. Oh. That's Brody, dude. I mean, how, how long has it been in your pocket, Ash? Like, two days now? Yeah, but it's ham. It's fine, and it's in my bag of holding, which is like a stasis thing. Oh, so, so you said fine. pocket. I assumed it was in your pocket since you called it pocket ham. He wouldn't be able to smell no, your no. bag of holding. Oh, well, it is called pocket ham, but no, it's in my bag holding. Oh. It's like a little refrigerator. It's perfect. But I will give him ham regardless. It is literally like the actual bottom of a woman's purse. Gross. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of is. And um, a bag of holding and does not have a time freeze on it. But I thought it was the astral plane kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, human like humanoids can still breathe in in the astral sea. It just means that you know there's certain places where you know it is like space. It, you know you can still breathe, but there's going to be all kinds of radiation and and like poisonous toxins in the air in certain spots. That's where all, like you know the the green and purple clouds would be and all that stuff. It's like it's it's concentrated elements in a gaseous form. Um, but, uh -huh. but where that stuff isn't, you can breathe. Like, there's still air. I need to go see Bob. <laughs> oh god, another shopping episode, are we? I need a lunchbox. I need something that I can put food and rations into that's not gonna let it spoil. Yeah, I could maybe build you something. And we need a mess kit. Bro, so you, you, you were need... meaning to, to make her fucking goggles of night for, like, the last six months. To be yeah, fair, it's been, the, the last six months have been, like, four days. I mean, and do you think it's gonna slow down in combat-wise in that time? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> That's my nope. little bitch. Maybe we'll have some time on the road when we head east to uh, Rock Guard Garrison. Don't you think so? Maybe. Hopeful. Hopeful. <clears throat> so. I need a lunchbox. Yeah, uh, you, you guys, uh, Wabu, you watch as uh, Sulami and Spoo Breaker uh, opens doors to the hall. And behind them walks in Ash, carrying a half conscious Richter. Uh, so Wabu sees his friends and starts smiling, waving. And then as soon as he sees. Richter kind of like flopping there. He instantly like stands up, ignores everyone, he walks straight over to Richter and begins inspecting Richter. Yeah, you uh, 
His eyes are like half shut. He seems very weak, um, beyond exhausted. So, so as uh, Wabu's inspecting Richter, he just kind of like with his one hand, he flicks out his uh, his necklace and grabs one of his um, his stones uh, and says a quick prayer and casts Greater Restoration on him. Look. Oops, not what I was looking at. Uh, you want me to share the spell? Sorry, I'm looking at it. Uh, want any reduction? Okay, so I think raw greater restoration restoration isn't supposed to work. Lesser restoration would be the one to get rid of exhaustion, I believe. However, I do not agree with the rule that greater restoration cannot do the same thing as lesser. Um, plus more, so yeah, greater restoration will work. Uh, I'll get rid of uh, both levels. Oh, fantastic! Richter um, kind of sl sleepily greets him, but then as soon as this happens, he goes, "Oh, oh, oh! I feel just fine now." Wabu, you are splendid. Ah, uh, we we have a lot of talking to do. And just kind of, it really cheers him up. And he pats him on the shell. Um, and Savage, it says it only reduces it by one level, so I can do it twice if you like in the spell itself. Um, for greater restoration? Yeah. It's like the very first port. You imbue a creature you touch with positive energy. Uh, you can reduce target's exhaustion oh. level by one. Correct. So I, I can do it twice if you like. Because I have two beads. Okay. So I'll do it. I'll do it twice. Yeah, Rick is really thankful for that. Does that just did the trick? How many more um, beads do you have left on this necklace? Like, like, do you like which? I sorry, I should say what spells did you have? I know you got. Wabu? Oh, sorry. Hardware muted. Uh, yeah, so I have two Greater Restoration on it, two Bless, and two Branding Smite, and all of those recharge at dawn. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, he, he casts Greater Restoration on you twice, and suddenly you're not as tired. Uh, you still feel a little weak. Uh, I mean, that's just something that a seizure will do to you. Um, but you don't have the levels of exhaustion anymore. Fantastic. I um, I hop right down off Ash, I thank her, and kind of fix my hair like a, like a combing fashion as I walk over to the food and just start uh, digging right in. Okay. Um, so as you guys, uh, you know, finish up what was left of your breakfast and Richter eats his, uh, Richter, you're going to have to prep your spells at some point. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, maybe, I mean, you could probably do that over breakfast if you'd like. Yeah, I pull out my book and kind of thumb through it as I uh, have biscuits in my other hand, just, just like just cramming them in. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you guys finish breakfast, and by this point, it's about 8 a.m. Uh, you have been told that the funeral is about noon out back of the Citadel. So, is there anything y'all want to do before the funeral? Yeah, I'm going to go to a lunchbox from Bob. Okay. Um, anything everybody else wants to do? Uh, when Richter is um, prepping his spells and eating, he's going to talk kind of between bites a little bit and say, uh, you know, I think I had um, dreams of Rock Guard Garrison last night. Can't be sure. It was kind of a disturbing dream, but... I saw mountains again. I think after this, we should definitely be heading that direction as we kind of been talking about. But yeah, it was it was an interesting night for sure. As he just kind of says that in passing, as his head doesn't even really look up from what he's doing. Okay. 
Is that a place everyone's been to? It is not. However, um, the original Stormforged uh, would know that that was pretty much their next stop. Um, it is roughly 80 miles away. And on Griffin back, you guys could make it in nine hours of flight time. And because I did not realize that there are specific rules to flight, your flying creatures are able to technically carry you three hours on on back and then have an hour rest and then carry you another three hours. However, your guys are magically enhanced. So I would say like you guys could make it in, uh, it was supposed to be nine hours roughly. So you guys can make it in 10 hours from leaving time. Okay. Cool. Um, and then since Wabu wasn't part of that, he's not going to know what's going on. So he's make, wait, rock guards? Like friends? Rock friends? We get to meet more rock friends? Gets really excited. No, no. The city you see, and I go into like all the history I know about rock guard garrison. And then Wabu just kind of sighs and like starts zoning out as he talks about this place because it's not exciting to him. Hey, Richter, give me a history. Uh, where where did you come from? Where like where was your character like born and raised? Born and raised. West Philadelphia, obviously. Yeah, Shut the clearly. fuck up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I studied in Hopper Duke. I was born in Felderwin, which is southeast, I believe, of there. It's a grain town, small grain town, but I uh, spent a lot of time in Hopper Duke. Okay, and that's on the southwest coast. Hopper Duke is south of um, Rick Centrum and Blumenthal, not that far actually. Okay. Um, well, it's 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 funny then. Uh, with your twenty six, you actually know a lot about Rockard Garrison. You know most of its history. Uh, you know that the current leader is. Where did I just put him? I made him last night. Ah, Marshal Garad Velius, a human man, um, well known to be uh, fair and just, um, but strict. Um, but, you know, the Wild Mount book is exactly full of information, so you start to chatter on and on about all this history and, you know, how it how it was founded. Um, yeah, they're fucking annoying. You don't even seem to notice the Wabu just starts to tune it all out. <laughs> yeah, Rick was eating and, and talking about the all this as he's just like doing stuff with his books as well. Yeah, and, and as you do, uh, you suddenly hear a bang. And you look up as, as Wabu's like holding his head with his eyes squinted, kind of rubbing his forehead. Um, but Wabu, uh, I assume you're, you were also going to prep your spells during your breakfast and, and such. Yeah, Wabu will as well. Cool. You guys got your spells prepped. So Ash wants to go to, uh, Arcane Bob's again. Anybody else got something they want to do before the funeral? Yeah, I'll take one of Ash's. Just go for company. Like a deal. Spoonbreaker, Richter, Wabu. I'm good. I'll just be tagging along. Uh, yeah, um, I think I'm okay. Yeah, Richter feels like crap after a rough morning. All right. Well, Phoenix, Wabu, and Spoonbreaker, y'all just chilling in the hall, hanging out. Um, the other three of you, you guys head to Arcane Bob's. Um, is there anything anybody else is looking for besides Ash? Actually, do we have enough horse meat? I don't know how much horse meat y'all got. Mm. That is on the uh, griffins. All oh, right, and your griffins have the hunter bags attached to their saddles, right? Yes. 
Okay, so that's basically what you're looking for is another um, bag of hunter. So each, it looks like each, each griffin has 20 rations of horse meat. It's 20 days for them. And we've been here how long? Doesn't matter. Uh, when you're here, they are being fed by the uh, stable hands and shit. Okay. It doesn't come out of your rations. Yeah, you walk in Arcane Bob's. He's snoozing. Um, we're just kind of going to fast forward through this. Uh, he says, yes, I, I do have a couple bags of Hunter. Uh, they are 20,000 gold each. Sure. Just one? I only need one. I'm going to pull out my big-ass ham, my breads, my cheese, my rations, and my spice box of zest to make sure that they all fit inside. Cool. And my wife. And do they fit inside? They sure do. And if you go into item handouts, under handouts, you go to magic items, uh, you will see the bag of hunter. And Ash, you have your own new bag of hunter inside that handout and everybody can edit it. Sweet. So you got you guys have your your um Griffin rations in there. And now Ash also has a section in there, so make sure you're when you guys go to give your Griffin something, you do edit that. So we each now have it, right? You guys have always had it. Oh. Yeah. Um so go to item handouts and then magic items and then bag of hunter. And if you scroll down, you can see that I have... It's one handout, but each griffin has their own bag. And now Ash has a slot in there that she can fill in with her own ingredients or whatever she's got in it. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So, I mean, if nobody's got anything else to do until the funeral, uh, we can fast forward to that. Uh, I'll ask... Uh, Bob again real quickly if he has any interesting spell scrolls I'm looking for um, uh, what is it there mass polymorph if he has that no not not in your, your sheet spoon breaker in your journal where you go to open up your character sheet my boy so instead of going down to characters, you're looking for handouts, player information, or sorry, handouts, and then the item handouts, and then you should see magic items, and then the bag of hunter. And you were looking for what spell? I'm sorry. Um, mass polymorph. A level nine spell. Yeah. Are oh, you guys? You guys aren't seventeen yet, are you? Mm, no. Be. I'm all fourteen. Can I not cast that? It's a level nine spell. Yeah, it's true. I only have level eight spell slots. So you. At level sixteen, you have level eight spell slots. You yep, have two levels of artificer. Artificer. Mm -hmm. I have one level 8 and one level 7. You guys are level 16, so that means you're at 14 in Wizard. And Artificer's only a half caster, isn't he? I think so.
Okay, so a half caster would give you basically one level of full caster. So yeah, okay. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, you should have one level spell, one level eight. So uh, you would be able to cast it um, if he has it. The only thing is you would have to roll an arcana check with the DC being 19. And if uh, you, and if you fail, the spell is gone. Scroll burns. Rick, Richter is gonna kind of scratch his head after saying that loud. He goes, "I think I fucking hit my head too hard today." He goes, "Sorry, Bob. I've had a rough day." And he's actually gonna change his mind. Okay. I mean, you could totally buy it if if you got the money. That's an expensive ass spell, though. Because uh, in this well, game, I actually have looking at my items here. I have a couple spell scrolls left over from the Grim Gallier attack. And I have one of those. Oh. Yeah, because a level 9 spell scroll is 255,000 gold. Yeah. Ooh, well, that's good to have just on me then, just in case. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was one of the ones we didn't use in the Battle of Grimgallier uh, when Bob helped us. But yeah, um, he's just going to just mention again that he bumped his head and he's having a bad day. And he's going to wish Bob a good day and say that he'll probably see him at the funeral. Mm, very well. So, are we good to uh, assume is there anything you want here? No, sir. All good. All right. So, uh, you guys head back towards the castle, and as you guys uh, come in through the front gate here, you can see that uh, uh, there is a lot going on in the courtyard. Uh, lots of the soldiers are kind of like helping set up and get things ready um, around the back. Uh, people are going everywhere. You see uh, carts with barrels being rolled in and small, small, uh, like easily buildable stands um, getting brought in as well. I'm so pissed. I'm dead certain I made that fucking map. I cannot find where I put it, though. That's so upsetting. That took me, like, fucking six hours in the middle of the goddamn night. Uh, but, so we're just gonna have to theater of the mind the funeral, boys and girls. I'm sorry. As you guys, uh, it starts to hit about noon. Um... You guys all head out back of the Citadel. Um, there is a small stage um, at the forefront. A group of elven bards who look nearly identical. Playing a flute, a lute, a cello, a piano, and a violin. Are playing a slow, melancholic song. So... For those of you who wish to listen to what they are playing right now, uh, it is. I will put it in chat. These bards all have long hair down to the center of their backs, and a goatee but no mustache. All dressed in dark clothes. No words are sung, and their eyes are closed as they sway with the music they expertly play. The music seems to be laying the ground for a somber event. People all gathering, you, you see um, several thousand people in this area. Most of them are standing in groups, talking and laughing. It seems like most of them are sharing stories of someone, some great feat they accomplished, or a laugh they shared in a tavern. Behind the stage, and to the left and right, frameworks of 
that's not the right word. Frameworks of stone slabs surround the stage on all sides, except for the front. Bar stands litter the area outside of the slab frameworks. As you walk into the area, there are thousands of slabs of rocks in the framework that stretch up only 10 feet. As you look up, you can see each slab and image. Richter, or anybody who wants to, can give me an arcana. You're pretty sure that these images... Oh yeah. All of you that have rolled so far are pretty sure that the images sitting atop these stone slabs... Um, you see that there are definitely um, bodies upon the slabs with white sheets. But sitting next to the body seems to be, on each of them, an illusion. Though... These images are silent. You do notice it looks like many of them are is showing them in one-sided conversations or cheersing with no one, laughing, getting soaked by a drink that apparently came from nowhere, reading, teaching an unseen class, getting married, screaming a war cry with weapons in hand, and thousands of other depictions of moving images of elves, dwarves, halflings, humans, and gnomes. Many people walk about uh, throughout these uh, frameworks, looking, seemingly to look for um, particular people. Many of them find the image of their loved ones, so they may share one last drink. Or just watch the images rotate through different depictions. Um, for the first time in quite a while, people don't really seem to take much notice of you. Um, for the original four, you guys are used to people constantly wanting to come up to you and shake your hand or share a drink um and although you, you do catch a few people kind of looking over at you some smiling or you some giving a grimace for the most part people do not pay attention Richter kind of keeps his voice down, but, like, does kind of shake hands if anyone's looking to pay him attention, but is keeping things very respectful. Like, you know, he's, like, like whispering, like, hey, hey, yes, I know, yes, yes. I'm and actually I'm very surprised by that. <laughs> he, hey, he's still he's still looking for attention, don't get me wrong, but he is um, being respectful of the scenario. A lot of people have died. I mean, it isn't really particularly quiet, um, but I get what you mean. Um, Dwarven, <clears throat> excuse me, the, since the city is mostly dwarves, um, Dwarven funerals are definitely not a quiet affair. Um, they tend to be more celebration uh, of life than, than sadness. Um, the music, however, is, it, the music is sad, but the din around Sounds more like, uh, you know, a thousand people stuffed into a massive tavern. Uh, there are a few, however, that do come up and, and wish to shake all of your hands. And thank you for saving the city. But for the most part, they leave you to be. Um... About 10 minutes in, uh, finally somebody does um, actually want to give you all some attention. However, the first one to come up seems to be a loud, drunken dwarf. Hey! Hey, you! 
And he's kind of like, he's swaying and he's pointing at you, Wabu. You're muted. Uh, yeah, Wabu kind of looks over at him curiously. Hey, you. You're the one with the... the you, you're the tree hugger, aren't you? Hmm? Uh, Wabu smiles like... He's like, uh, yes, yes, I, I, tr trees are, trees are good. Tre trees are, trees are nice. Ah, you made that big fucking wave, didn't ya? On that took out the, the massive trunk of the army trying to, trying to get in the city. I was like, oh, yes, yes, big wave, big wave. And he puts his hands up and does like a curl motion with them. Fuck yeah. And like his slurring is quickly getting worse. And he pulls out a flask. Well, let me tell you a story. And uh, he, he hands you the flask. Well, he takes a sip out of it first and then he hands it to you. I'll be honest. They're in that bottle. My friend. Mr. Chugs. He done lost his life. Okay. But right before he did, you know what he says to me? Where? Sorry, my fucking accent just keeps changing. Where? He done said oh, he is proud to be fighting next to the Stormforged. He said it with a smile on his face. You know what happened next? What what happened? He he pauses, puts his finger up as he like chugs the last of what's in his mug. A fucking rock landed on him. <laughs> Brutal. But you know what? <laughs> He went out the way he liked. Fighting Stone. the... Fighting the... Wow, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> he done fought... A, alongside the Stormforged. He's proud of that. He had a smile on his face. Till I got crushed. So today I'm drinking for him. You drink more. Drink more for my friend. Wabu will take a another another swig. Yeah, as you start to put it up, he puts his finger underneath and like kind of pushes the back end up. Come on, <laughs> come on. That wave saved the rest of us. You earned it, boy. Yeah, w Wabu will will drink, but he'll do one of those deceptive drinks where he like slow drinks it, even though it looks like he's drinking more than he is. Hmm, performance or deception? Let's go with. I'm gonna give you perform uh, deception advantage because he's fucking hammered. Wow. All right, all right. That, now, don't drink the whole thing. And he, he takes it back and a little bit spills on the ground. Thank you. My friend didn't die in vain. The city was saved. It's all thanks to you. He puts the flask back on. Or the, the lid back on the flask. Starts to walk away. Then he notices... Spoonbreaker. Ah! Yeah! Hey! Hey! Yeah! As now he's pointing at Spoonbreaker. Yeah. You, uh... You made the cloud above the city, yeah? 
I did. That was me. Your turn. And he unscrews the flask again and fucking pushes it towards you. I gladly take it. You like chugging it? Sipping it? What's uh, that? Thinking. Thinking. I think I'll take a healthy, healthy gulp. Yeah, you uh you, you take a, a healthy, healthy gulp. Um Wabu, th this probably uh I, I feel like you're probably not uh used to drinking a whole lot. This this was really good stuff, but it did burn a little bit. Spoonbreaker. The man or the dragonborn who shoves gold coins up his ass. I'm sure you've had many a blackout nights. This is good. Uh it doesn't hurt. This is this is some fine stuff. He says, uh, as you take a huge uh, swig out of it, you like that? Oh yeah, oh it's definitely great. Appreciate your ge your generosity. He opens up. Uh, he he grabs a bag off his shoulder. He don't want to yell to have this. But there. Us, Mr. Chug's private recipe. And he hands you guys a bag. This bag, as he passes it over, is pretty heavy. It, it clinks. As he hands it to you. He almost drops it, but uh, he manages to steady his hand. I'm been dropping that. I've only got one more bottle off of this. There's one in there for each of yous. Hope it keeps you warm on the cold nights. Fighting the battles you need to be fighting. Um, I, you know, graciously thank him for it. There in there is six bottles of Mr. Chug's private stock. Sorry, um... Mr. Chug's... Yeah, private stock. It's up to you whether you dole that out or not. He kind of handed the bag to you. Yeah, I'm gonna give, uh... I'm gonna give half of it to Phoenix. Fuck the rest of them, eh? <laughs> oh, dude, I mean, I know Phoenix, you know, that's his lifeblood. Yeah. Uh, Richter, I think you still have control of Phoenix's uh, sheet. Yeah. I mean, if he's giving half it to Phoenix, there's three bottles in there for Phoenix, and what are you doing with the other three? Um, I'll hold on to him, and uh, I think I'll save him for special occasions. Wow, fuck the rest of them, huh? Dude, it's Phoenix's lifeblood, and I'm <laughs> saving it to share amongst the squad in special occasions. I'm not even drinking it myself. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, yeah. So, what should, what should I put it in his inventory as? Uh, bottles of Mr. Chug's private stock. And Phoenix has three of them. Uh, also indicate that there is uh, we're going to go with 15 shots a bottle. Yeah, Phoenix will take it out and start sampling it and be very, uh, very pleased. Cork it all up to have for another day. As you guys are wandering around, um, Bettany does um, happen to find you, Ash. Ash, hi. Hey, how you holding up? I mean, I, I, I'm okay. I, I, I found Jimmy's grave. 
they managed to dig him out of the, the rubble. And they put him on one of the slabs. Let's go see him. Okay. Um, are the rest of you going with her, or are you guys just hanging out doing something else? I'm gonna not go. I'm just gonna hang around and look uncomfortable and try and stay out of limelight. Uh, Richter's working on transcribing a spell into his spell book. Oh, so you're going to find a, a corner out of nowhere, eh? Yeah. Uh, what spell are you scribing? Uh, plane shift. And how much money and how many hours does that take? It's a seventh level. I'll just get started. I think it takes. Is least is time. Wabu able to help Richter on that? No, because he knows plane shift. That's the reason why I asked. The the druid magic is different than wizard magic. Okay. So the the spell might be named the same. It does the same thing, but the way of casting it between druids and wizards is different. Okay. Yep. Yeah, makes sense. I will look into that, and I'll just get started. It takes a lot long. It will take many hours. I think at least the number of hours of the scroll. All right. I think it's uh, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's like two hours um per per level, isn't it? Start a collection. Let you know. And I think it's like fifty gold per level. Which I mean, y'all motherfuckers is rich, so. Yes, we are. Um, Ash, you and Bethany head back to, um, to where she leads you. Um, it does take minutes, uh, like 10 minutes to actually reach the spot. And, um, considering what you think his body would be like, uh, you know, the, the body on the slab underneath the sheet is, he, he's rather flat, but you notice that there is no blood on the sheet. Um, getting crushed by rocks like that, that's not normal. Um, even a decaying body. So, Bethany says, I really like how they, they laid them on the slabs and then, not sure how they did it, but they made sure the fluids, for, for lack of a better term, uh, it doesn't leak through the sheet. And she kind of begins to cry a little bit as she's watching um, the image of Jimmy um, handing out soup. And as you look around, you do notice that a lot of the other depictions, they all have... Um, they have multiple depictions, you know, it's, it's kind of going through almost like a, like a video. You know, uh, they're doing one thing and then they're doing another thing. Most of Jimmy's depictions are all the same. Handing out a bowl of soup and then disappears from his hand. Um, I will comfort her and say I like how they captured Jimmy doing what he loved to do. Yes. But wait. The best one's coming. As you sit there and watch for a minute or two in silence. The same thing over and over again. Uh, different ways of doing it, you know. Even uh, even makes up a couple fancy ways to, to give out a bowl, you know. Kind of spins it on his finger as he spins around. And then kind of lets it go and catches it without spilling a drop. And hands it over to somebody that you can't see. But then eventually, um, Ash kind of grips your hand a little tighter. And he's down on one knee. Seems to be talking to someone. Um, as he, he kind of looks straight forward. And it seems like he's probably talking to a child. You can see tears welling up in his eyes. 
and then he hugs someone unseen. Bethany says, I still remember that day. The day my mother died. I'll give her a squeeze. She squeezes back and you can hear her sobbing. Um, but that is about the extent of it. it says, uh, the Underbaron should be starting the actual ceremony pretty soon. We should go. Okay, we'll head back to the main event. Um, so, Rector, I'm going to say you're going to get your first hour in. Okay, great. Spoonbreaker, Wabu, Sulamine, uh, anything you guys want to do before the ceremony starts? Over the course of an hour? Oh, no, I think I'm good. Yeah, same. Vibing. Okay. Well. Ash beats up with the rest of you. And um, the tune begins to change a bit. It becomes a little more solemn. And the conversation starts to die down. And people kind of uh, start heading towards the stage. Uh, since there is, uh, you know, a couple thousand, however, not everybody can get front row seats. Where would you guys like to be? during this whole thing. I think we should be at the back and let the people who, you know, lost people be up front. So I'm assuming our griffins are here too, right? Yeah, I'd assume you guys kind of uh, got them. The the griffins would have just been hanging out at the back. Um, you yeah. definitely would have seen a, a couple people try and like, you know, walk over and touch them. But of course, the griffins would have snapped at their hand, not actually snapped their hand off, but like, you know, kind of like a, a warning nip. I would slap anybody near sleet <laughs> myself, just saying. Yeah, I'm going to go to the back and hang out with the griffins. Alright. Well, if you're all at the back, funeral will begin. Um, As the song begins to change, the song you will be listening to, if you wish to follow along, is Lost by Adrian Von Ziegler. Same name as up above. You see the Under Baron take the stage. And you see a couple of wizards up there with him as well. Seemingly to um, be casting a spell on him over and over again as he begins to speak. And it takes a minute for you to realize what it is, but uh, as soon as he begins to speak, it is pretty obvious that they are using the Thaumaturgy spell. Across the crowd, from the front of the stage, you can hear Under Baron uh, Dumeroff. As we are gathered here today, we thank the Stormforge for staying to honor our fallen. And he kind of like um, motions towards you at the back. Without them, this city would have been lost. So raise your mugs your horns, or whatever else ye bastards be drinking from. To Richter, to Spoonbreaker, to Ash, to Phoenix, and the new recruits, Suleiman and Wabu. May your names make the lips of your enemies quiver in fear, and live long after your chest lay still. A cheer arises from the crowd, followed by the sounds of thousands sipping or chugging their drinks. 
The Under Baron sets his mug down upon the podium, and he grows more somber. The last five days will be remembered in the annals of history. The first day, as the day we were caught unaware of the dangers that lurk below us, and the rose to destroy us. The day where every man, woman, and child capable of picking up arms rose to the challenge. The day war cries were shouted by all, only to be drowned out by the th sounds of battle and the screams of pain and agony and demise. The day the battle was won with losses so great, there would be no untouched by the pain of a broken heart. The second day, which came with no rest as we searched for the missing, buried in the rubble. The day our magic met its limit in the care for the wounded. The day we did all we could. The day we counted more than 5,000 among the dead. The day we wondered if we should count those 2,000 souls in the mines among our fallen. The third day, where we heard stories from the few miners who escaped, confirming our fears for our kin in the mines. The day many still refused to rest as they dug through the rubble and rebuilt what they could. The day we built monuments and new catacombs for our loved ones. The day the final count came in, and the annals will show we lost 9,611 souls. And he, he points to two points on the map. Sorry, uh, <laughs> two points in the city, um, of which you guys can see. Um, they are very large. They, they look small on the map, but they are massively tall. Um, the Over here we have the... Uh, a hundred foot dwarf stone statue um, with the names etched in to pillars that stand uh, at the four corners around it. And he motions to the other one up in West Grimgallier. An elven statue of the same uh, making. He says, The fourth day the day we finally take some rest before the fire in our bellies and the rage in our hearts brings us back to our feet. Building, fixing, friend, neighbor, family, and even enemies helping each other in a way we've never seen and never before needed in Grimgallier. Today, the day we remember them all, the day we do not, he pauses for a moment and his voice kind of trembles before it raises even louder than before. The day we do not mourn our losses, but the way we celebrate the lives given to save not just Grimgallier, but all of Wildmount. The day the names etch upon the monument burn bright in the darkness, lit by the fire of their souls, the fire of their love of their home and their kin and the fire of their hate for the wretched evil that would lay us low. He slams his hammer on the podium before him, as if a signal. Both statues, visible from uh, this area, suddenly become engulfed in flames, burning bright within. Although it is hard to see from here, um, it looks like possibly the names of everybody who's lost that has been put on um, the four corners of the monument are also burning bright. The eyes of every single name, uh, sorry, the eyes of these statues, as well as every single name begins to shine, lighting up large sections of this massive cavern turned city. No matter whether you are dwarf, the dwarves cheer. Elves, the elves cheer. Halflings, the halflings cheer. Gnomes, gnomes cheer, or any bloody anything else. If you fought with us, this is your home. You'd be one of us, like it or not, and damned anybody you'd be telling you different. The people cheer 
Um, but you can hear the sadness in their voices. Thousands of people cheering with choked and cracking voices, but the Underbaron's bluster gives way to solemn tones once again. Normally, I would attend a funeral of a member of the Grimgallier family, but I wouldn't be up here speaking. It would be the loved ones of the dead sharing stories and memories of their lost kin. Today, that is not possible. There are too many to have loved ones come up and speak of their friend, their father, mother, uncle, aunt, husbands and wives, or even their children. So today instead, meet a stranger, share stories of those you lost, find comfort, laughter, and company with a new friend. <coughs> Sorry, <clears throat> it's hurt my throat. The voice raises, his voice raises again, and he raises a, uh, a mug. And ye be drinking a toast to those that lost. To those lost and those who are still here to fight for tomorrow is the sixth day. The day we begin to plan our vengeance. The first day of the next chapter of Grimgaldier. The first day of the next chapter of Wildmount. And the beginning of all of the fall of the undead army. Um, at this point, the crowd goes wild and the bards immediately switch up their songs. And Yeah, apparently my my I muted my mic. Um so uh Fuck, you guys did hear like that whole like okay. Yeah, cheered? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right up till the the crowd cheered and then you just cut out just like uh, five, five seconds. <laughs> Sorry, give me a sec, man. That fucking doing that accent hurts my voice. Um <clears throat> Um yeah, the the Bards begin to change up their tone and turns more into a party song. Um, first one is Bring the Ale by ASCII. Um, but I've got a whole playlist after that to continue off of. Um, drinks fly, mugs are thrown, bottles pop, uh, weapons in all variety are raised high above the heads of the crowd. Everyone give me a D100, please. Ooh, look at that. And by that, I'm talking about Wabu, it's not mine. Yeah, I assumed. <laughs> You're saving yours for later. It's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. As everybody cheers and stuff is getting thrown in the air, you see, uh, <laughs> you hear, Oi! Stormforged, welcome to a Grim Gallier funeral. And the crowd in front of you charges at you. What do you want to do? Stand my ground. Do they look happy or like they want to hurt us? Anybody wishes can give me an insight. I don't have advantage. Wabu, you're confused. Richter. You're not sure what's about to happen. But you don't know if you're going to really like it much or not. But they don't seem to be angry. Sulamine, you've seen Dwarven funerals before. They did a cheers to you before sending off their loved one's souls. E 
they're gonna make you crowd surf. Uh, because Wabu's confused in the turtle, he's gonna pop into a shell. Oh yeah, that's not gonna stop them. <laughs> no, uh, but he doesn't know what's going on, yeah, so it's no, just his fair. like self defense mechanism, you know. We'll keep a hand on my bag of things. Yeah, for sure. As they charge, uh, is anybody trying to avoid what's coming? I'm embracing no. it. No. Richter just like, is probably like really uncomfortable. Like, ugh. Yeah, they, they all charge you. And like, I mean, Wabu, you're the last one to go up because it does take you like... You, I'm, you, you I'm a, a heavy boy, boy. I know. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. even with dwarven strength, they are struggling. There's like eight of them trying to lift you up. And, uh, well, with your weight, it's it's going to be hard to get you to actually crowd surf. There's a good chance yeah, at like some point you're going to fall to the pounds. ground. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Um, but they lift you up and they hoist you above the crowd. And, oh shit, that was too much. Uh, you all start to crowd surf. However, let's see. <laughs> oh, this is good. I forgot about this part. Um, so that's what the D100s were for. Let's see. Wabu, you got 98. Oh, man, that's mm -hmm. so sad that you got the highest. Because you're oh, already in your shell, man. Nothing's going to happen to you anyway. Um, mm -hmm. However, who got the lowest? I think Ash did with 16. Ash. You're crowd surfing. And there's uh, corks flying. Um, alcohol is flying everywhere. You know, people are spraying each other with bottles. And, you know... Uh, I mean, th this is what a celebration is. This is this is a fucking party. And along with some, you know, crazy parties, um, sometimes shit gets, um, you know, thrown. You feel clunk uh -huh. in the back of your head. It hurt a little bit. Not enough to draw blood. Nothing like that. No damage. Um, but you're pretty sure you might have accidentally caught a... Uh, uh, a mug in the or or a stein or something in the back of the head as you're you're getting crowd surfed. That's fine. It happens. All right, I need everyone to make me perception checks. Except you, Wabu, unless you're coming out of your fucking shell. I'm still in my shell. This is chaos. <laughs> 23 Ain't a party Ain't a savage party Till the cops get called Alright let's see We got Alright four of you And Wabu's su sustaining Or abstaining That's the word Cool cool He's the DD Hmm. Ash and Sulamine. The two of you notice um, Under Baron, Delatus, and Arcane Bob shaking hands and drinking um, off to the side. They seem to be in a dark corner. Um, having a quiet conversation. Judging by the guards who are in front of both of them, it seems like they are trying not to be overheard. That seems shady. It does, does that suspicious? Well, as the celebration goes on, what would y'all like to do? Stay sober. Are we still oh. crowd surfing? I mean, you, you can find a way to get out of it anytime you want, but, uh, I mean, you guys are kind of getting, you know, crowd surfed all over the place. 
It's not like there's somebody to catch you. They, you know, you start to run out of room, they just turn you the other direction. But you guys can get out of it if you want. Uh, Richter is going to use his uh, halfling nimbleness and just kind of start passing through people, get down around them, and come out the other side of a bunch of people, passing through their legs and just kind of running around. Though they are dwarves, so I don't know if I could do that as effectively. But I will use my small stature to try to get around and then just kind of brush myself off again, tidy myself and continue the revelries to try to look for my team. Hey, how about the rest of you? Yeah, I'll try to dismount. Eh, right. I'll just it. Sumi just got his hand like covering that, covering his pouch with that $50,000 or 50,000 gold necklace. And everything else is working out into the world. <laughs> he's just sitting there holding like six different bags on his chest, looking like he's in a coffin <laughs> while people are crowd surfing him. Alright. <laughs> Not my jewels. Spoonbreaker, how about you? Um, I'm sorry? I missed I missed the question. What what are you what are you doing? Are you just going to continue going with the crowd surf until it stops? Yeah, dude. What I already said I was on board, dude. Like I have no qualms with everything that's happening right now. I'm part of the tradition. Okay. I I, I was just asking because I mean it's it's not like there's an end point. They just turn you when you get near an end. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's ride it out for a bit. All right. Cool. Um, Ash. Richter is small. It's pretty easy for him to roll off the 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 uh, the crowd surf and, and and get away from it. You, however, you are not small. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, I'm gonna need like an acrobatics or something on this. Yeah, okay. Acrobatics sure. sounds about right. Okay. Try and roll off, and you know. Find a spot where nobody's ready so they can't catch you and you can land on the ground. 24 to land on my feet. Holy sh... No, acrobatics. Uh, so you rolled a 10. What is your acrobatics? Uh, 8. 18? Okay. Yeah, you, you managed to get off. Uh, you, you do kind of like roll to the opposite side and everyone's like, Whoa! As, as they they're they're trying to catch you, but unfortunately you end up landing on like uh, two dwarves and an elf. Oi! What's the meaning? Of, oh, oh, Ash! Ha! Hi! Excuse me, sorry. I didn't mean to land on you guys. Ah, it's all part of a dwarven funeral. And uh, he he helps the. Uh, the other dwarf up and then then the elf and uh they all continue drinking and partying um you're a little taller than everybody else um but richter's about the same height as the dwarves or maybe slightly taller <coughs> so unfortunately uh he's gonna be hard to find so give me a perception oh god okay yeah uh, 12 yeah. Richter, you are also looking for her. You can give me a perception as well. <laughs> Holy shit. Nice. Uh, she's tall. I'm going to give you advantage. <laughs> oh, good. I thought you were going to let me down again. <laughs> well, yeah. You, uh... You managed to spot her. However, it, it looks like she's looking for someone, but she doesn't seem to notice you. I use... Uh, yeah, I just hop on my broom of flying and fly over to her. Yeah. <clears throat> you're, you're flying a little bit above the crowd, and... Uh, before he makes it to you, Ash, you do spot him. I'm like waving to people, uh, go, making my way over. Okay, I'm going to nod in the general direction of Bob and company. 
and just just be like, does that seem abnormal to you? We see what's going on. Yeah. Yes, and we she, will. She, she. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I asked if you. I thought you uh, asked if you could see. Yeah, I did, but I think like, yeah, let's go see what's we're, going on. No, we're we're, we're we're walking over. Yeah, like I said we know these people. We're sure. hot shots. Let's let's go. You guys start to head over, and in the meantime, Wabu, you feel a thud as you slam into the ground. Oh, and all you can hear from inside yourself, Shell. Oh, sorry there, Wabu. We kind of lost you. The health's not as strong as us, I guess. And uh, you can feel that although part of your shell thudded against the, the stone ground, um, you're pretty sure that a good portion of your, your shell also landed on something soft. Ish. Oh, shit. Um, I will quickly pop out of my shell. Ah! He's ready. Let's get him back up. Well, I'm like, he's like, got his hands up. Like, no, 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 no. Hmm. I want you to give me a luck roll. They start to lift you. Um... However, they are unable to, to get you back up. Um, the elf seems to be in a fair amount of pain. Oh, God, my, my leg. Uh, and, and as this particular elf cries out, uh, the, the dwarves who, who were about to pick you up uh, notice him. Oh, shite. I think we done broke his leg. Wabu will like kind of like wave him off, and he'll head over to the the elf, and then he'll give him a, a check. He looks up at you. <laughs> Why are you so heavy? Wabu just gets a big old knock on his thick thick shell. He's like, "Homes aren't homes aren't light." Okay. Uh, <laughs> homes aren't light. Yeah, because like you know, <laughs> their their shells kind of like their home in the the lore. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, yeah, you 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 look at him. Oh yeah, his legs busted, man. About four spots. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is am I able to just a uh, normal healing spell to kind of fix that, or yeah. is it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll pop, I'll hit him with. A, I mean, you a know what. Word. I feel like if it's broken leg, you should probably try and reset it first. Yeah, you I want to do a medicine. I... Yes, a medicine would be a good idea. Oh yeah, you you basically like get on the one end of his leg, and he's and you're like, all right, one, two, yank, and like you kind of yank it on two instead of three. Ah, but it it looks pretty straight now. Okay, and then I'll just hit him with a healing word. And blap a healing word. You then. <laughs> do you want to describe how you do this? <coughs> oh yeah, I just gonna give him a big old smack right in the spot <laughs> where it's broken. <laughs> exactly what word. I was thinking of. You, you just kind of like raise your hand, and he's like, "No, no, no!" And you like slap his leg, and you're like, "Heal!" And yeah, no, his he goes, "Oh, oh, oh okay." better and he kind of like stretches leg out thank you and he gets up and uh he's like i'm i'm gonna go drink over there though thank thank you uh wabu wabu just smiles and nods he doesn't really understand that he's avoiding wabu yeah um so now that you are out of the uh crowd surf what do you want to do uh, I'll head over where I see my, if I can see my companion, companions that are heading over in that direction, I'll head over to them.
I don't know if I can see him. I probably can over the dwarves, but you know. Sorry, I think I had my mic muted. Uh, give me, give me a perception. Okay. Uh you are miraculously able to notice where all of your companions are. You see Richter and Ash heading off towards the back of the um, celebration. Um, you notice Spoonbreaker and Phoenix and Sulamine um, just going along with it. Yeah, w Wabu's had enough of going along with it, and he's probably going to head over to wherever Richter and Ash are. Sure. And Spoonbreaker, Sulamine, y'all just still rolling with it? I'm going to probably notice that we're dwindling in the crowd surf and start heading, well, if... heading with people. All right. All right. Well, give me a uh, perception disadvantage if you're still on the like rolling around on the crowd surf. It can be hard to notice them, but give me give me a perception disadvantage. Eleven. You notice Sulamine and Phoenix still rolling uh, along with it. Um, you notice that you don't see Ash, Richter, or Wabu still on the crowd surf. I will give you that much. Did you just want to try and roll off? See if you can go find them? Yeah, yeah. Alright. Give me a... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, give me an... Acrobatics. You managed to get near the end, and right, right as they're about to turn you to send you the other way, you kind of roll off in the direction you'd originally been heading. Um... You manage to be at the end of uh, the one side, though, so you do end up uh, rolling over uh, off of the crowd surf and land on your feet. Um, a bunch of the uh, dwarves and elves and halflings and gnomes around you kind of cheer and kind of raise their mug to you. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll nod at them and... Uh... Started, I guess, heading around the circle to get get to get to the rest of the group. Okay. Um, roll me another perception then. See if you can find the uh, find the others. Straight roll this time. You're gonna be wandering for a couple minutes. Um, but, uh, I need to run to the bathroom, and apparently I am out of cigarettes at my desk. So, we are going to quickly take a five-minute break. Awesome. And we will Perfect. be right back. We will return after your sponsors. Let's insert the elevator music. I'm transferring. Um, I just finally finished filling up my my notebook, <coughs> and um, I'm transferring over to a new one, and going back through my notes. And I, if we teleported back into our place there's a password and everything i wrote it down here so thank god we have this but do you remember what it is i apple i think it's i have two passwords here aristocracy and cultivar and one's a password to get in the other one's for like not getting destroyed, and I forget what's which one's which. That's funny. I would have to check uh, check my notes to be honest. Send someone back first. Uh, you go first. <laughs> Ash can take it. I just wrote password, and then wrote them both down.
I had that written down somewhere, but I don't know where that is, by the way. Yeah, I see we're dead. Technically, only one of us, so, you know, the odds are good. That's true. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. But you gotta go, you gotta go. Takes a while to get that shell off. <laughs> I actually saw today that you could buy like a giant cozy turtle shell thing that's meant to be like, comfy, comfortable to wear and just lounge in it like a blanket. <laughs> For the turtle folk. Maybe I bought it, maybe I didn't. You'll never 
never know. I saw. <laughs> I I want to get the shark one. There's like a it's a, like a a shark throw blanket, but you can like sit inside it, and it your feet goes where its tail is. I got a big tortilla blanket that I use. It's like a real life tortilla looking like. Not like a burrito. I bought one for I bought one for the baby. It's the best. Oh my god. That's I'll amazing. send a picture cuz cuz they finally dressed her up in it and it came with a little burrito hat. <laughs> you fucking nerds. <laughs> Since the dude running a D&D game. Zach was you back? If not, we'll we'll, we'll just start. Apparently he is not back. So, um, he'll get here eventually. Like you said, that shell takes a while to get off. So, it's hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, so, let's see. Ash and Richter are, like, over here at the back of the funeral thing. Phoenix. Phoenix is just going to crowd surf until the fucking cows come home. Uh, Wabu's, yeah, Wabu's looking for them. Uh, Spoonbreaker, you you noticed them, right? Noticed who? Yeah, like yeah, you were looking for the others. You, you rolled. Did you? I can't remember what I said. Did you actually uh, notice them? No, you said I'd be wandering for a few minutes. Okay. Sulamin, you can give me a perception. So, I mean, you notice that um, Phoenix is the last one crowd surfing with you. Everybody else um, is no longer up there. Well, we go work to attend to. Now's a good time to end the frivolity and go look for the group. All right. Give me an acrobatics uh, to try and... Uh... Uh, I'm going to say you have advantage. You're an elf and you're uh, a rogue ranger thing person. Oh, yeah. You managed to, um, as they go, as you get to the end over here, um, they actually, sorry, they go to turn you and you manage to roll off and Oh, I thought Phoenix was actually here for a second. That's that's you doing that, Richter. You asshole. <laughs> yeah, it's me. Uh, you you roll off, um, and it takes them a few seconds before they even realize uh, you are no longer up there. So as you sneak through the crowd away from the people who are trying to get you to continue crowd surfing, you can actually take a look and give me another perception. Uh. You are unable to spot the biggest point of the group. However, um, a tall dragonborn head does happen to be bobbing uh, above the the crowd as uh, he makes his way through. You're able to no notice Spoonbreaker. Uh, you don't notice anybody else. <laughs> I'll follow Spoonbreaker. That's a good place to start. Spoonbreaker. Uh, Sulamin, I assume you're not trying to be stealthy, you're just kind of like... No, no, I'm not trying to sneak up on anybody, I'm just moving through the crowd. Spoonbreaker, give me another perception, please, as you're looking for the group. You notice Sulamin. He must be heading towards you. I'm going to be a little confrontational for a moment and be like, oh, you thought you were going to sneak up on me? You know, Spoonbreaker's had a little to drink. I was going to rob you. You'd already be naked. Well, fuck. You didn't need to excite me first. Right? <laughs> Robbery with a happy group. ending. Where the fuck is everyone else? This fucking No group clue. Group. They're hiding out somewhere around here. I smell some weird shit in the air. Yeah. And it's not me, I promise. 
No judgment. Awabu, uh, you are the first one to, uh, or you're the first one who has noticed Richter and Ash, and it's going to take you a, a couple minutes to catch up to him um, as you kind of make your way through the crowd. But Ash and Richter, two of you start to head towards uh, Under Baron uh, Dumaroff and Dolatus. They don't seem to notice you approach. However, uh, like, are you guys just walking right up? Yeah, I'd, I'd say like we're probably yeah. chatting to each other, and uh, I probably have a drink in my hand, and yeah, I think we're, we're walking right up and kind of butting right into the conversation. As you guys walk up, uh, the Under Baron and Delatus do not seem to notice you. However, they uh, Delatus seems to have a book in his hand, and. Uh, you can't really see what's in it, but he's like pointing at things in the book and, and, uh, <clears throat> they've got their back to you, but you know, he's kind of holding the book over a little bit. So you can notice that, you know, it is a book under Baron. Where'd my music go? Oh, it's just like super quiet. All right. Let's change that one. Bongo drums. And tambourines start to ring out across the crowd <laughs> um but as uh, you notice the book uh, and they've got their back to you and you guys start to approach the two guards um look nervously at each other and kind of step in the way but they're it, it's obvious that they are terrified if they get in your way but they do it because you know loyalty Um, I'm going to ignore them, although I'm nearly bumping into them, and I'm just going to keep our conversation going, as if I didn't realize they were there. Yeah, and I'm going to keep conversation and just pass right through them, right through their legs, if they try to do anything with my half my nimbleness. Um, yeah, um... Uh, as you begin to push through them, um, Ash, advantage, athletics. Uh, 27. Thank you, Snow. Hello, everybody. We're playing some D&D. &D. I hope you enjoy it. I uh, try not to... It's Sorry, give me one down. second. I uh, try not to do a whole lot of talking to chat just because it kind of breaks the other players' immersions and, and whatnot. But I promise, if you talk in chat, I am fucking Hello? listening. Hold on a sec. All right. Sorry. Uh, okay. I just I just got, like, the second raid of the night. So, holy shit. That's a lot of people. 136 people. <clears throat> um... Party time! Let's <laughs> fuck these people up! Um, so... Holy fuck, man. That's a lot of people. Man, uh, I'm not nervous at all. Um, 27... Yeah, you, you push right past these two guards. Uh, and, um, Delatus and, uh, Under Baron, um... See, so yeah, look, I'm getting nervous. I already forgot his fucking name. Dumaroff! Under Baron and Dumroff both snap around and look at you, and you see Delatus quickly close the book. Ah, uh, Stormforged, what can I be doing for ya? Richter, I'm just the muscle here. I wanna... I... Yeah, I guess, I guess we, we come up and uh, we're still chatting and we're laughing a bit, and we um, say, oh... That was a great service. Um, really riled everyone up. You know, I think we're really going to be able to to keep the spirits of the city high. Do we still have anything planned for for fireworks or anything, or has that all been scrapped? He kind of asked him. We're likely going to be making our leave sometime shortly after the festivities. Well, everybody's uh, in pretty much in this area, so we're probably going to be dropping some fireworks straight off the top of the citadel. 
So, I mean, when you're ready to go, maybe do a couple loops around the Citadel. You know, uh, stand out to the way of the fireworks, of course. And then, uh, you head on your way. But, uh, I'll be honest. And he, he kind of takes the book from Delatus and, and opens it. Uh, and he kind of looks at some things. He's like, I don't think we can be affording quite the festivities that, uh, we'd originally be planning on. Uh, I believe, yeah, that's understandable. Recycle everything you need back into the city. We just want to be prepared not to let the people down. Keep this momentum going. And the rebuild should be taking you know, less time, perhaps. I, I... Well, I'll tell you what, you, you, you be coming to find me. Uh, I'll be around here somewhere when you're ready to go. Just so we uh, we know when we're setting them off. Uh, does Richter notice the book? I mean, you can see the book, but he's not like holding it so that you can see what's in it. Is it? Does it look like he's trying to hide it from me? A little bit. I mean, like he uh, opened it to to fucking look through it, as he said he couldn't really afford to do the the entirety of the celebration that they were planning on uh, upon your I departure. Are they sitting? How, so how, describe to me how they're sitting as we walk up. Are they in a booth or are they just like standing beside each other? No, oh, they're they're just kind of standing in a corner at like the edge of the citadel. Uh, there's like a small corner in there, um, which is why the the guards kind of stood in front of them. Is because there's just a small corner with the two of them, and then like you know, the two guards were pretty much enough to block the way for anybody coming up. Yeah, Rector's gonna take a swig of his drink and and walk in and kind of happily gesture that you know the party's going pretty well and he's actually going to misty step um around the other side of him and kind of have his arm not around him but close to him and offer to cheers all right <clears throat> as uh you do <clears throat> to me um he does shut the book and he grabs his own glass kind of off the or his own mug off the ground and picks it up, and he goes to cheers you with it. Yeah, so I, I cheers him, and then uh, after I'm done, I uh, I kind of gesture to the book, and I'm like, oh, what's this? this? What are you reading? Uh, it's, uh, it'd just be a ledger. <laughs> you know, uh, just, uh, you know, finances and supplies and what's not that we might have here. Can I insight check him? 100%. Yeah, I'm gonna insight check him. <laughs> it seems that he's probably telling the truth. Um, as long as you've known him, um, he hasn't really lied to you. He might have, uh, he might have kept a secret or two, but it wasn't anything that put you in danger or the city. So, uh, I mean, it's up to you is, whether you believe him or not. This is Delatus, yeah. right? This is, sorry, this is Delatus or this is the Under Baron? It's Delatus. Yeah, so Delatus and I also had a bit of a funk yesterday with the questioning. So I'm, I'm not going to push anything and I'm just going to say, um, you know, I, it's been a crazy couple days in Grim Gallier. We've had our up and downs. And while I thought I wanted to leave the city, it's glad to know that I could always call this place home. Um, it was a pleasure to meet you all. I say, and I give them all another cheers and I cheers Ash as well. Yep. They'll join you. Uh, they take another drink. Like, I and then I kind of like. Sorry, I didn't really like that you, you you accused me of possibly being a traitor, but I do understand where it was coming from. So I'm not gonna apologize for snapping, and I'm not gonna ask you for an apology for for accusing. It was a fair question, but. uh 
Just do me one favor, Richter. What would that be? Make sure you be putting an end to this war soon. And he kind of like, he doesn't open the ledger, but he kind of looks at it and he's like, without... If this war doesn't be ending soon, Undead army or not, Regalia will not be lost in. We are low on everything. Our mine is closed. It'll be at least a year or two before we can open it again. Which means we have no income coming in. We're low on uh, supplies. <clears throat> we put our walls and homes back together as best we can, but we have next to nothing left. The coffers are nearly empty. Got nothing. And uh, the army pushing in. There's not a lot of hunting to be done to supply meat. Do you know how much meat it would take to supply even one day? Of more than 9,000 people. These are big worries. City's in good hands. I, I mentioned to him, um, I recap kind of the scenario with the Thieves Guild and mentioned that if there is extra resources when there's time to watch out for their return, uh, because their presence in the city obviously has a tie to this sort of stuff. So just watch out for that and that the location of the Thieves Guild could be a good spot for them to check out for resources to continue looting that get to that stuff what you mean it, the, the building has riches in it or under the rubble I mean that where their building blew up and I let him I kind of fill him in on the information I've been drinking as well so he's Rick, Richter's not going to not say anything he mentions he doesn't go into detail about the riches but he says that their base was located underneath there so there's likely good things or more to look at under there when they were when we were there last it was quick i see so you think they might be have something hidden down there i wouldn't put it past the bastards so what you would know is that there was multiple things that you guys did not have a way to put in your bags like that uh solid gold uh basically arc that was down there 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 was there was probably still a couple million worth of, uh, worth in gold, uh, of items and other things that you guys were unable to grab because it wouldn't fit in your bags of holding. You still, still had more fighting to do. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, Richter is going to gesture to Ash and, like, actually, like, say out loud, like, hey, what do you reckon, how much gold do you think was left down there? There was some stuff left. I, know, I, would, I would say it'd be worth for you guys to check out with everything so strapped. There was some big stuff down there. Yeah, there there was things that I couldn't fit in. I couldn't even carry. So uh, I think there's definitely worth the gander. They 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 kind of uh, look at each other and they 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 smile, and Under Baron uh, laughs and and slaps Delatus on the uh, on the shoulder uh, before he moves to like go to grab you for a massive hug, uh, Richter. Just like the, the dwarfiest dwarf hug you could ever dwarf. He he picks you up and he squeezes you. Ah, we may not be done after all. Ha ha ha. Thank you. Oh, that's excellent. Delatus, tomorrow morning, we put some of the miners that survived uh, back to work if they're up for it. Uh, we go down there. And we, we, we start to be pulling out some of that some of that uh, gold and, and things that would be under that rubble. I'm Do glad I'm glad to be more of more assistance. I um, about this time uh Wabu, you managed to make it to them. Uh, it, it's hard to get through that crowd. I mean, it's 9,000 people. 
So, uh, you, you do happen to finally get out of the crowd, um, and you notice, uh, Richter Nash talking to Delatus and, um, Underbaron. However, Suleiman and Richter, you guys have a choice. You can do separate perception checks, or one of you can do it at advantage. Um, I'm okay at perception. He's, uh, Richter's fairly perceptive. No, no, uh, s sorry. Did I say Richter? I meant Su uh, Sulamine yeah. or Spoonbreaker. My apologies. Okay. Sulamine for sure. All right, Sulamine on advantage then. 28. Uh, you notice Wabu making his way out of the crowd, uh, waddling with his big ass shell towards uh, Ash and Richter, uh, who seem to be speaking with Delatus and uh, the Underbaron. You guys are able to make your way out if you'd like. Yes, I think so, I guess. All right, so Wabu, you're, you're the first one to um, make it over to Richter and Ash. Um, you are covered in all kinds of alcoholic beverages. Um, as you move with your your flat feet, they're they're kind of sticking to the ground. Um, you know, with the the party going on around you, celebration of life and whatnot. You're muted. There you go. So did I make it all the way to them? I'm just like coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're 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 far enough from the 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 crowd. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, I'm like smiling with them. Like, hey guys, hey, hey, it's me. Oh, I'm over here. Hi. Yeah, you you uh you get there just in time for Richter to be put down after this massive like dwarf hug. Richter. Ash, anybody? I wave him over. All right, I was coughing. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna stand there and and keep drinking. But I'm gonna I'm gonna smile at the fact that I saw Richter nearly being crushed by a dwarf. All right, so Wabu, they're just going to ignore you, I guess. <laughs> oh, I said I, I would wave. I would like kind of like gesture to him because I'm, I'm kind of like drinking and carrying on with the group. So I would just be like gesture my hand up in the air and see if he notices me or try to make him notice me. I smiled at Wabu. I thought he saw me, but okay. Oh, you, okay. Uh, I don't think that came through the mic. At least I didn't hear it. Apologies. Oh, I said I was drinking and smiling at Wabu because I just saw Richter almost being crushed by a dwarf. Yeah, so Wabu, you, you walk up and, uh, you know, they do what they do. And uh, Delatus and Underbaron uh, Dumaroff seems to be happy to see you. Ah, Wabu, you enjoying the party? Uh, Wabu smiles. He's like, uh, yes, but it, it's kind of odd, but it's fun. Odd? What you mean odd? You're muted. I did nobody hear me say the whole thing. Uh, I heard you, Wabu. I heard you. I heard okay. you, but but then I said, uh, what what do you mean odd? Oh, did oh, nobody I, hear I me? I didn't hear that. Nobody heard you. <laughs> it's, oh. I, I hate running a uh, fucking OBS and, and administration because if I That's click okay. anything on, if I click on any of it, then my push talk doesn't work. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm not used to be carried so much. I'm kind of heavy, you know? And he kind of does like one of those like side shuffles. Nah. My dwarves are strong and he kind of flexes. And you can see that... Uh, you know, dwarves are built uh, not like, you know, bodybuilders competitions, but they're built more like, you know, um, strongman competitions. There's no definition 
it looks like they're all fat, but in reality, that's like one or two inches of fat and, you know, a half a ton of muscle. <laughs> Uh, Wabu responds, yes, yes, dwarves very strong. The elf, not so much. <laughs> you landed on one, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and Wabu just is like a little closer. He's just a little bit. Ah, they're used to it at this point. And at this point, Spoonbreaker and Sulamine, um, you you guys are, uh, are exiting and you notice uh, your friends. I'll talk into Delatus and uh, Under Baron Dumaroff. <clears throat> Wave to them and walk up and greet them. How's it going? Ah, better now, better now. Turns yeah, out. We uh... talk... Go Sorry. ahead. I was saying, yeah, we were just talking about the time Bob regrew his leg. It was crazy. Yeah, that's awkward. Doomroff stops and Delatus both stop, kind of. Lucky at Richter, their heads kind of cocked. What? What? What should be meaning? Oh, sorry. <laughs> this ale's getting to me. He oh. was just talking with everyone, so he was carrying on with some stories. I. Oh. Well. I'm just. Excited that there's something left in that uh, Assassin's Guild. We're going to send out some miners tomorrow, replenish our uh, our coffers. The uh, We might have won the battle, but... I did that whole speech about starting the war, and unfortunately, <laughs> we didn't have the money to do so. But I, I think whatever is left down there might uh, may be able to help. Certainly hope it does. It should. Well, I should be going to mingle with the uh, the peoples. Um, at this point, uh, Phoenix also kind of rejoins the group. Um, he still he, he found a keg of some sort, and he's just kind of carrying it while he's like got the uh, the tap kind of in his mouth, just like sucking on it as he as he comes up. I don't. I. I. I'm not gonna. As I can't do would. his voice. I, <laughs> I can't do his voice, man. <laughs> I just. I don't even know. We greet him in, and we just kind of cont continue drinking with him. But he does. Uh, he he joins you all, and asks, uh, uh when uh, yeah, he asks the rest of you when we're all planning on leaving. I just have one goodbye left, and I'm ready to head out. I uh, let people know about the plant when we leave with a little bit of fireworks and theatrics, the theatrics but uh, Richter said he's ready when everyone else is. I'm ready now, sooner is better than later. All right. Says so Walt, in that case... You all hop on your griffins. And when you hear me start talking over the city. Just do a couple spins around the citadel. Staying out from the, the very top of it. And then you all can be on your way. If you don't mind. I'll start looking around for where Bethany is. Um... She kind of followed you halfway out of the uh, the crowd. Um, I mean, Delatus and uh, the Underbaron are her patrons, for lack of a better word. So she didn't want to interrupt. But she she's standing off to the side, a little ways away, enjoying the festivities. I will. Okay, I will go to her and say my goodbyes and remind her about... Um, her invitation to the uh, to the mansion when she's ready to retire. 
Oh, you're you're going now? Yeah, it's time to head out, unfortunately. I get uh, it. War is not gonna win itself. Well, I want you to know that even in the midst of all this war, this has been the best time of my life. I've enjoyed our stay here, and I can't wait to see you again. Me too. And she leans in for a kiss. I will give her a kiss, and then I will abruptly turn around and walk away, because, you know, she can't see me crying. So, I'm going to head for a Vulch. As you get about halfway to Vulch, you hear her voice over the din of the party. I love you, Ash. I'll stop and I'll... I'll tell her. I love you too. And as you kind of like, uh, give a glance over your shoulders, you're doing this. You can see the... tears welling up again in her eyes. But... For the first time since the attack, you see a smile on her face. And she does kind of rejoin the festivities. Now she goes and gets a drink as you're strapping up a uh, vault. The rest of you are getting your griffins ready. But as you mount up on your griffins, you see her standing to the side. She has not stopped watching you. And as you guys mount up, you wait for a minute or two. You hear. Ladies and gentlemen. The Stormforge need to move on on their journey to fight this war. Please. Raise your drinks. As we bid them, farewell. And you guys are aware that that is your cue. We launch. Or at least Vulch does. Um, Richter is going to shoot three scorching rays um rather he's gonna cover himself in fairy fire and take off uh it is a 20 foot cube so you could probably get more new if you wanted to I didn't warn anyone about this so I don't want to freak anyone out but I'm gonna just do myself and my griffin and i'm going to tell my griffin not to worry it's uh it's magic no harm to no harm will come to you yeah seen it before fool let's go of course let's fly and i like it's uh green okay so um you all begin to take off and as soon as you start your first loop around the citadel, fireworks start to um, burst from what you know uh, is basically the window of the throne room, shooting almost directly straight up. Bang, 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 colors going everywhere. You guys make your two swings around the uh, citadel. Um, the crowd is screaming, just cheering. Uh, and then eventually you begin to hear a chant. Storm Forge, Storm Forge, Storm Forge, Storm Forge. And as you guys complete your third loop, I start to head towards the gates on the western side. You exit the city. For the first time in, what, six, seven days in game? Six or seven months in real life. <laughs> yep. Oh. 
Jesus. Thank fucking God. How does the wind feel on our faces? I feel like I'm free. It feels glorious. And Glad to be the sun. It is a... I so want to be the asshole. It's like, it's pissing down rain. But no, oh, I, it's, it, it's, it's a sunny day. I'll, I'll give it to you guys. It is a sunny day. Um, and as the wind seems to be coming from the south, uh, the undead army is not near enough that the smell of rot is on the wind. Uh, it's, what, summer right now? Where's the calendar? Speaking of which, did you uh, push that calendar forward? Yeah, I've been on it. Uh, but not since this this uh, long rest. I'll change it. Okay, so we are in... What, Bruce Ender? Yeah, so it is summer. Today is uh, very warm, but it's not too hot. Uh, the sun is shining... Maybe two little, like, pure white clouds in the sky. The breeze is glorious. You haven't had much in the way of moving air in the last several days. <laughs> All right, give me one second. Some of you spent some channel points for a non-combat encounter, so I need to bring up my tables. <laughs> the second we come outside, ah, uh, safe and sound. Yo, for real. <laughs> but it, at least she, 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 you know, used her channel points for a non-combat encounter. Uh, let's see, where are they? Here, and then D stuff, roll tables. Non-combat encounter. Um, so the small-scale combat is for when they are in a small-scale combat. That's when you use those. It, it changes the, you know, some dynamics of the fight is what that does. Um, oh, oh, one second. Snow, you didn't tell me who. You're, you're supposed to, uh, when you use those, you're, you're supposed to say who rolls it. All right, Wabu. You, sir. Yeah. D100. Well. 12. Meteors fall from the sky. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> Holy fuck, are you serious? <laughs> it's asteroids, not me. No. Um, uh, you, 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 no. Um, as you guys leave, and you guys are in your first hour of travel. Ah! Uh, a, a fucking dwarf suddenly is like screaming as they're just falling from the sky directly in front of you and passes you just like right in between a, a couple of you and your griffins oh I'll cast feather fall on them okay it is a reaction. So yeah, right as he passes you and his voice begins to fade, you manage to get your spell off just in time. However, um, as he begins to descend slowly, oh, oh god, oh, oh no, 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 oh, 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 this is nice. Um, you look up and you notice that there is zero explanation for where the fuck he could have fell from there's no you don't see a sky ship of any kind you don't see um th there's nothing did he maybe try to stow away on one of our griffins your your griffins are definitely not large enough to uh to to hide a dwarf in its feathers 
They're he large, but they're not that off. large. And, and your Griffin would definitely have noticed that. And they didn't launch him out of a cannon, right? I don't know. He, he, he's slow to falling him. towards the ground. Let's go talk to him. Well, you don't see that every day. I follow. I've got to see how this turns out. Yeah. Yep. I need to see how this turns out as well. I'll follow. All right. So as you guys are finally up in the air and and on your way, the sun shining, the breeze in your hair, and this dwarf just screams pot past you at that mock fuck. Like, <laughs> he casts a... He casts a <laughs> mock fuck. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, I laugh at my own joke so hard I should probably die from laughter. Uh, um... Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you guys, uh, Richter casts, um, slow fall, and you guys manage to follow him down towards the ground. As he lands, oh, holy fuck. That was a trip. How's you? Are, are you the one that saved me? It was us, the storm forged, and I gesture to our team. The storm forged. Yeah. I, you've heard of us, I presume. I, of course, I've heard of you. And he's gonna name you all off, uh, very slowly, because I'm looking for. I had a new rule table that allowed me to make a fucking NPC name. <laughs> And I seem to have already fucking lost it. Roll tables. Okay, hold on a sec. What's this one? Is this the one that's got it? Nope. That's not it. Okay, hold on a second. Factions, options, NPCs. Here we go. Uh, let's make him. Okay, he's going to be an artisan. So, I would like to Wabu, you rolled the D100. So, let's go with Sulamine. You haven't done much tonight. So, you are going to give me a uh, Son of a bitch, these are all quests. Ah, you're gonna give me a D4. Okay, four. I want Spoonbreaker to give me the next D4. Two. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go with Ash, next D4. Okay, so we've got... What you talking about? Oh, of course, well, let me just highlight several of them. Cool. There goes my Ashes. Of course. And... Four... Okay, that there is some gold I think I can work with, and Richter, give me a D8. Five. So... He says, ah, uh, so apparently this is not the naming table, so he's just not going to give you a name. He says, uh, 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 well, that's, uh, that's wonderful. Uh, the Stormforge, eh? Uh, but he seems to be looking 
about nervously as soon as you said the words Stormforged. And who might you be the pleasure of being? Ah. Uh, fuck you, Richter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know you just told me you didn't have a name, but you I don't know. Make up a name that makes sense for a dwarf, and that's what we're going to call him. How about that? You, you uh, want to ask names all the time? You Andor. get to make up a motherfucking name. His name's Andy. Andor. Andor. My name's Andor. Andor Bruner. Hmm. Very nice to meet you. Uh, Why were you falling out of the sky? Oh, well... Four is <laughs> never say bone. You almost hit my friend Wabu right off of his Griffin. Oh. Are you okay, Wabu? Sorry, sorry about that, uh, Wabu. I've uh, just been testing a a new new contraption and trying to uh, sell to the. The, uh, the good people. So it happens that I am a... Fuck is it? I lost it now. Oh, wow. I... Fuck, where is it? I, I just happen to be making a, uh, a new kind of launcher. Uh, however, I had it, uh, kind of cocked, uh, ready to go, and as I was, uh, I noticed there was an issue, so I, I went up to try and fix that issue, and, uh, the thing done gone off. May have, uh, sent me for a flight. Uh, I mean, wh where are y'all coming from? Most recently, Grim Gullier. Oh, Grim Gullier. How they doing? They, uh, they maybe need some defenses. I could maybe, uh, -huh. uh make, uh, make something for them. I could sell them my invention. As long as you don't watch yourself first, I think that would be an excellent idea. I'm sure they'd love to see you. You, uh, think you could maybe give me a good word? Sure, a letter from the Stormforge could go miles. To be fair, we just met you. And I have no idea who you are and how good of an inventor you are. Well, I can show you my device. It's about two miles that way. And he points up into the mountains. Uh, uh, so you guys are pretty much like right here, just to basically the northeast edge of that shield on the map. Uh, he says it's uh, it's just up there on the mountains. Uh, I've been working on this launcher. Had to kill a few undead <coughs> who managed to find their way up to uh, my testing grounds. And, uh, I mean, I did just fly about two miles. Let's go have a look at it. Yeah, anything that can maybe give us an advantage against the undead. Uh, 
who might I be able to ride with? It'll take me a few hours. It's two miles in that direction, but about six miles up. I don't think you want to be waiting for me until, uh, you know, next week. I'll <laughs> ask Vulch if he's willing to carry him in his claw. Boot? And he, he, he kind of looks at you and his eyes goes wide. He cocks his head to the side. Food? No. Food. Not food. Aww. We get food at the top of the mountain. We'll Bullshit. Rest Bullshit. Fine. No. Horse. Huh? He, he kind of like walks over to the dwarf. And he kind of looks him up and down. How birds do, cocking his head to the left and right. Not horse. As he looks at you. No, he's friend. We'll have horse when we get up to the mountain. But you need to carry him. Please. The thing immediately, like, slams him to the ground with his claws and, like, kind of, like, do doesn't, like, dig his claws in. But, like, Puts his foot on him and just slams him to the ground. We go! We go! We go. And he kind of, like, crouches down so you can, like, get up on him. And the dwarf's like, oh, God, he's heavy. But you guys, I'll just uh, shake my head and let Vulch take off. Yeah, you, you, you guys head off. And you can hear him, like, shouting directions up to you. And, wow, that... Scottish accent just came out of nowhere. Um, <laughs> up to you. He's shouting directions up to you. And uh, it doesn't take long. Uh, you know. It's uh, two miles, so it's like all of... I think... Two miles is... I don't know, roughly maybe... Uh, just a few minutes. Um, but then it's six miles up. So, he takes you to it. Uh, it takes you guys about 15 minutes or so to get there. And you guys all land. This contraption. Um, he says, now, now check this out. Okay, right now. It's got a sling on it. Now, I also have this. This wonderful contraption. And he, he picks up this, what looks to be a large seat. He says, now, if you want to, you, you, you can undo the tension. On this so it doesn't fling as far but it can still fling a person we we just attach this here and he kind of like you know um puts uh he puts the seat on it and and puts a couple things on and he cocks it back um and he's like you can throw rocks you can throw barrels of oil to start a fire you you could throw whatever you'd be wanting but if I... you if you make this uh, the, drop this tension down here then you can easily just launch you know people or bodies or whatever you'd be wanting over the over the walls to uh you know you get eight or ten of these and you you put your special battalion in there and you know i have this other contraption it uh basically you pull a cord and it pops out the top this this thing it allows you to kind of Float down to the ground. I would have been wearing one. I just didn't expect to actually go flying, you know? I uh, scratch my chin and look to Ash and the team, and I say, you know, you could put something in here and, and launch it. Something, it's like you said, that makes a big, big explosion, a big boom. You know, this could be something we could work with. How much do you want for it? Well, depends. Am I am I building it, or am I just giving plans? Let's take the price for both. Well, let's see. If I build it, um, and you need them fast, I can make... I could do one, uh, myself in about a month. Uh, it's going to cost me probably around 800 in materials. And then my time, which, I mean, it's not free. I need to be able to eat and drink. I'm doing it myself. 
probably looking at a uh, thousand uh, however if I can find a good team to help me build more and build them quickly uh, I mean I could build each one for the same price and that way the the men can have some some money as well but if uh, I'm selling the plans I mean Honestly, I don't think I can sell the plans. I could maybe set up a business, though. Uh, and have people just... Uh, fi find me some workers, you know. And send them out all over the place. Yeah, I was thinking the same. Okay. You know what? I have somebody I want you to meet. Her name is Nessa. Hang on, don't quote me on that. Yeah, Nessa. Okay. Yep, <laughs> Her name is Nessa. Nessa. And um, she could be one of those persons to uh, to help you uh, build and... Uh, Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I don't do very often, but I'm thinking on this one. Richter, what do you think? I think we could definitely work with this. I reference Mizanar, my friend back there, and say that he has some resources, and we should um, put these into production right there. Absolutely. I think we could also provide you some no. uh, logic. Maybe work that into the pricing for cheaper pricing. He wants to live there as he does this. So you are aware that um, none of your people actually live on uh, in, in the building. You guys are the only ones that actually live there. Even your followers oh, yeah, uh, have right. their own lodgings off of uh, off <laughs> place. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but we could arrange for him for um, what's her name. Sakura. Sakura. You, you keep wanting to call this woman Sakura? Shakira, man. It's not happening. It's <laughs> Sakura. 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 Watch an anime once in a while. God damn. <laughs> yeah, we could have a <laughs> range to find him something. Ah. Or just pay him good enough so he can stay wherever he wants in the city or nearby. Yeah. Oh, you you all got contacts in uh in other towns along the front line, yeah? Of course. I I think we could be making a deal. One thing we've had an issue with is flying beasts. These undead are tricky, and they've been flying past some of our creatures. Any sort of netting, uh, we've been working on netting, actually, back at our lodging already. Um, it'll some sort of combination of this. If this could shoot some sort of net and help with our anti-air, this could really help us in some key battles, I think. I... And I, um, yeah, I think we, I'm eager, I support the decision to hire this guy. Okay. Well, goddamn, this is not, I, man, this was just supposed to be a fucking non-combat random countering table, and y'all, like, collecting NPCs at this point. I'm going to make another NPC stop block. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> All right. You, uh, what you don't yeah. know is that and Act you. is actually a dragon, and she collects people as her horde. <laughs> the actual fuck. Andy is canon now. Don't tell the DM. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andor Bruner. All right, just a little reminder for me. I tell you what, we got uh, if we got the deal. 
And he kind of like uh, spits on his hand and puts it out. I'll shake. I'll spit on my hand and shake it. All right. He says, all right. And he says, give me a moment. I'll, I'll need you to take me back down to the ground and then he, and point me in the direction of your home. Uh, I'll if if somebody's already taking care of your home though, I I'm gonna need a letter justifying who I am and why I'm there. Uh, can I pull out my sending stone and send Jiro a message? Send who? Hero. I'll never get her name. Right, you should just change it. Do you say hero? It's a hero. Oh, all I kept hearing was hero. Like, who the fuck is hero? Oh, no. Sakura. 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 Now, there you go. Put it all together, girl. You got it. Sakura. Sakura. Yes. <coughs> yeah, I'll pull out my sending. You stone have twenty-five and... words. What are you saying? And you only get one message a day. One message, uh, 25 words, or less. Uh, hang on. Uh, maybe somebody smarter should do this, because... Uh, People can't uh, pronounce Sakura. Come on. Uh, um, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. I think I got it. Endor Broomer. New staff. Pick up in Groom Gallier. One week. Does that sound fair? So that's what you say? I would yeah. say that makes sense to me, Ash. That was very concise. And oddly intelligent. <laughs> right? That's it for me for the week, guys. <laughs> and it... How long... Sorry. How long did it take us to get here from Grim Growlier? I know it was only a couple hours because we're in flight. But how long would it take him to get to Grim Growlier by foot? Um, I mean, you guys have been... See, it was, I worked it out last night too on a calculator because I was trying to figure out how long it would take you to get to Rockguard Garrison. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure he's got some. Sort so of I want to make sure he can get there a little bit faster. Than I mean, uh, you guys are only a couple hours out. So like at most it would take him like 10 hours or so. Okay. I said one week just to make sure. Cause I, I would, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, my statement stands. Yeah. So because yeah, you're fine. a barbarian and you don't understand time very well. True, you are aware that Sakura and the other two had just left Grimgallier uh, merely two hours, or no, about four hours before you did. By horseback. And he's ten hours from Grimgallier. And how far is Grimgallier from... When you guys drop, if you guys go straight down the mountain and drop him, he's ten hours. So they're gonna be looking each other for looking for each other for a week, but you sent the message. So, you quickly get back. A week? Are you serious? Ugh. Fine. Tomorrow, tell me where he's staying, since he's only work once a day. End of message. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. He says, um, well, that's good enough for me. And he grabs a uh, can of oil and he throws it on top of uh, this this one that he's... Whoa, 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 We're not burning this one. Ah, uh, yes, we are. Can't let them what? get their hands on it. And you can't transport are it down. 
Um, how big is it? Uh, this thing is probably about 1,500 pounds. Uh, or no, sorry, that's wrong. Uh, about 15,000 pounds worth of lumber, ropes, uh, joint, like, metal for joints and such. Like, this thing's massive. I mean, it flung, it flung like a 350-pound dwarf over two miles. Oh. Yeah, like, it's fucking huge. There, there's no transporting. This was just his testing ground. He, you guys saw him gather up the, start gathering up the plans and stuff. So like he has, you know, all all the stuff he needs to make it in terms of like planning and whatnot. But he doesn't want this to also fall into the wrong hands or like competition or the undead army. Uh, it's fair. I was just hoping we could take yeah. this one with us, but yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Girl, you strong. Uh, you I'm... ain't that strong. Come on now. It can be. On a good day. Um. Let's. Uh. Can I also tell him to that, that he will be meeting our um, house manager um, at the Citadel. So uh, tomorrow I will tell her in one week the day that she's supposed to pick him up. It, she'll be going to the Citadel. I I will head to the Citadel and let them know. Uh, I I feel I should still have a letter from from you all to 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 give to the uh, the head of the city or or something because they're not just going to let anybody in there. Don't right. So somebody else. Is gonna so have Wabu to do thinks he's helping. So he'll pull out a, <laughs> a piece of parchment, if you allow me. Yeah. Pour some ink on his hand and slap it on there, and then above it, he's gonna write Wabu's seal of approval and hand it to him. He he takes it, and, and, and as you like, you know, you just kind of slap the ink on there and like hand it to him. He, he's kind of looking at it, and you. He's literally watching the the ink just kind of like run down the page. And Wabu's got a thumbs up and a smile on his face. Yeah, just it's just a handful of black ink, like thumbs up. And as you're like squeezing yep. your thumbs up, it's just like dropping ink onto the ground. Uh I I don't know if this is going to be enough, honestly. He looks at uh, Spoonbreaker, Sulamine, and uh, Richter. You, maybe one of y'all want to be writing me uh, some kind of acknowledgement that we have uh, dealing and I'm supposed to meet somebody at the Citadel. Props, maybe, please. I don't want this deal to be falling through. It's kind of my dream. The Artificer Guild uh, refused to allow me entry, said my, my ideas were wild. It was ridiculous. But I proved right here that they work. It is some pretty wild engineering, I must admit. And I kind of hesitantly go over and say, I will approve this as well. And I do um, write a little note under Wabu's thing and uh, leave a little area. I guess we probably have some sort of sigil or something we can slap on it. I mean, nobody's really bought a stamp, um, but... I mean, you guys were in that town a long time and there was a bunch of time to be fast forward so I'll tell you what somebody wants to take uh, let's say 20 gold out of their inventory you guys can choose who and I will say that uh, that person has a uh, has a you guys have a storm forged um, stamp um, in fact each one of you can have one Stormforge symbol is the same, however, on the stamp is also the name of who the particular stamp belongs to. Uh, it also came with a uh, a stand with a like a a wax melter to go with the stamp. Um, you know what? We'll, we'll say if everybody wants one, you guys can put it in your inventory as um, Stormforge stamp and. Uh, I don't know, wax warmer. 
And it's going to keep cost each person five gold. So anybody who wants one, you may put it in your inventory and remove five gold. I'll say you guys did that while you were in the city. Yeah. That stamp sounds really cool. But I think Wabu thinks his hand is good enough, so he probably didn't buy one. That's fair. Because, you know. That's fair. I'm curious, Wabu, what is your intelligence? It's, uh, it's actually pretty good. He's, it's, uh... And your wisdom is super high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, intelligence is so it's like, yeah, yeah, it's sixteen. This is intelligence. Holy you shit! To... You're smarter. You're smarter than Ash. Yeah, it's he's just really naive and he just doesn't care about things that he doesn't like. So if it's not like friends, I mean and that's animals... that's fair. That's fair. I mean it, it, it's fun role play. I, I'm thoroughly enjoying your character. I was just I, I got curious there for a minute. Like yeah, yeah, no, he, he's not like Ash. He's just dumb in areas he doesn't care about because he doesn't care about it. He's Don't like, judge. You know, yep. Playing wild. yep, that's exactly <laughs> snow. That's exactly. Right. Exactly. Now they've got a new fucking hire. Like, god damn it! Now I got to do a bunch of work. Damn you, snow! I'm just kidding. Keep coming back. Um, yeah. So, uh, as as you guys uh, write this down, uh, he kind of he he continues to cover the thing in oil, and he sets a match. He lights himself a cigar. Oh, tis then a he shame. throws them. He flicks the match. Whoosh! Thing goes up, and this thing is probably about fucking thirty feet tall. Um, but he he grabs his bag, says, "All right, you've been dragging me down to the ground, and I'll head to the city." I will throw Vulch. Um. Some horse meat because I promised him some. Yeah, you throw him a ration out of that horse meat. Yeah, ration. I do. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, ration is uh, so you got you got twenty rations. That's what it says, right? Yeah. So I'll no, I'll give him half a ration because it's one ration per day, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll give him half now. He, he eats it really quickly. I will also feed um, Red Eye. Okay. The rest of y'all feeding your, your uh, griffins too? Since they're doing it? Yeah. I'm gonna feed Sleet. It's a good thought. As you guys all feed your... Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm pretty sure if one person is editing it, uh, the handout and somebody else tries to edit it, it won't work properly. So I'm going to have, if everybody's feeding like half a ration right now, then whoever's in that right now editing it, please just edit it for everybody. Remove half a ration from the stores for each person. Please and thank you. Who's doing that? Thank you. I'll do it. All right. Nash, you got it. He says, well, super glad that uh, they're f you're feeding them. The black one was looking at me like I'm food. You are food. Oh. Oh, my. He kind of like box and you see him kind of go white and, and Volch looks up. Food? No, and there was a friend. We just had some horse meat. Dragon lies. And he, he sucks back his uh, his horse meat. Um, but you can all, like, you can tell that they're all enjoying it. They love it. You hear multiple things of, like, oh, finally, horse meat. Or, you know, other reiterations of the same thing. They're super happy. So after about, you know, 20 minutes hanging out up here, you guys uh, head back off. Uh, you guys drop him off on the ground. And then you make your way out. I'm going to say it was about 2 o'clock when you originally left. Uh, by now, it's probably about 3. When you guys drop him back off on the ground. And you guys still have 78 miles to go. 
um, towards this spot right here. Rock Guard Garrison. So with your, your at least one break you're going to need, it's going to be about uh, 11 o'clock midnight by the time you guys make it. But you guys head off. He waves uh, goodbye. And he heads off with the letter and all of his plans towards Grim Gallier. Is this uh, uh, Wabu's letter? Uh, the one Wabu gave him, but Richter also wrote on it as well. Okay. And okay. sealed it with his uh, wax seal. All right, all right. Why, were you, were you about to write a new one? No, I was hoping that it was just Wabu's letter. <laughs> uh, so don't forget, Ash, the next day you are going to have to, uh, you know, tell her where to meet him. I won't forget. So, you guys head off. And as you do, most of the rest of the day passes without incident. And it gets dark uh, about an hour before you guys get to Rock Guard Garrison. Nothing else extraordinary happens during your visit. So, let me mark the map here. We do blue and it is okay, that's regular right you guys get to rock guard garrison as you guys are starting to fly in um the sun has gone down and you guys uh how are you approaching the city are you just flying right in are you stopping outside the gate like are you flying real high are you flying real low like what are you guys doing This is the place that all of our dreams have been stemming from, right? So I think we should try to be a little bit discreet. Yeah, I agree. When we were coming in, we Richter would have probably discussed a little bit about the city and the location. Do we know um, any... It's pretty close to the front line, we know that. Um, is there any indication of war or any activity around smoke or anything like that damage to the terrain? There is uh, definitely a smoky smell in the air. Um, you do not, as you get near, you do not see any fires burning. Um, there are quite obviously like, you know, um, torch lights and street lamps lit. Um, but you do smell smoke in the air. And as you guys get near, you realize that this town has been hit by several, uh, the, the walls are still standing. It doesn't look like there's enemies inside the gate, uh, at least from your, your vantage. However, you can tell, like, there's, there's small embers burning, um, from, uh, in some of the buildings that have been destroyed. This has definitely been a front line in the area and there has been plenty of activity in terms of the war do you think we might do well to land outside the gate and make ourselves known before we just pop in yeah probably all right so you guys are landing how far away from the front gate and walking the rest of the way. A couple hundred yards. Okay. Yeah, I, that I agree with that distance. That is yep. supreme. I would like you all to give me a. Everybody can roll me a d20. Nineteen, five, seven, ten. Okay, and sixteen. Wow, could you guys really make that average any fucking more average? All right, give me a second. Just gonna do a little uh, average calculation here. We've got nineteen plus 
5 plus 7 plus 10 plus 16 equals 57. Fuck, how do you do an average again? Oh, you add up all the numbers and then you divide it by the number of numbers that there are. So there's one, two, five. three, four, five numbers. Okay. So 11.4 is the average. So you guys land um, a few hundred yards out and uh, as you do, um, the gate, although there are some torch lights by it at the most southern gate, and I'm going to bring you to the map. It is a very large map, so you guys may drag yourselves out here on the very uh, left. Oh. I'm going to ping until I see everybody's token. You can bring Phoenixes out as well, Richter. Alright, that's five. Beauty. So you guys are a uh, couple hundred uh, yards away. But as you guys land, uh, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of activity upon this gate. But you do see that there are people up there. Um, there are torches lit. And there do seem to be uh, kind of a patrol along the top. And as the six of you, along with your six griffins, begin to approach, do you holler before you're in sight or no? Uh, yes, I think we should yell, Hail! Oi! Who goes there? We are the Stormforge. Good sir. Wait there. I'm assuming you all wait, I guess. Yep. Sure. Yeah, it, we'll wait. It takes a couple minutes, but uh, somebody comes uh, out towards you. And you guys can see them before they can see you. But, you know, he, he's carrying a torch and he's like looking out into the darkness. But he's got, you know, um, he's got a shield up in front of him. And he's looking back and forth. And when he finally noticed you, um, the light at first only shines on you all. He's like, yo, the storm forged. And then from around behind you, the uh, griffins kind of like step into view. Oh, God. And he drops his torch and he's kind of scrambling backwards. And you hear Volts go, Boot? No, Volch, he's not food. We'll get you some food when we get inside to rest. B -b 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 Bloody right I'm not food. Uh, but as as he kind of like as the griffins stop approaching towards him uh, he, he kind of settles down a bit and he, he kind of like picks the torch up again and looks at you bloody hell you really are the stone forge eh the one and only indeed well welcome to rock guard garrison eh and uh, he says please follow my I seem to be jumping between a really shitty British and a really shitty Australian accent. You're welcome. <clears throat> but he, he, you. <laughs> he, he, uh, he fucking, <laughs> he leads you guys inside of the gates. As you guys get inside, um, you see that this back end and seems to be still rather put together um not a whole lot going on uh you do notice that uh 
Let's see, where is the legend? What is a Lord Western Gate and training grounds? Okay, so I just prepped this at like fucking between like 2 30 and 5 a.m. last night, so I'm gonna have to look at the legend. Um, you do notice that uh, there's some trees that seem to be lining the pathway towards these two uh, towers. It seems that there is a wall um, all the way along, except for the only way to get further into the city is this walkway, which has some large stairs um, leading up to uh, a portcullis. Um, up here is seems to be some rather um, general housing area. Whereas down here almost looks more like a bit of a military base. Um, the, there are living quarters and uh, it seems to be... You, know, you, you can notice some signs that seem to uh, tell you which area is which. Uh, you know, uh, one says, you know, greenhouse. One says white house. One says yellow house. Much of this area seems to be cut up into, you know, certain living quarters. Um, however, there's one building that stands above the rest. Right here. Which is... It looks to be a temple. Um, you can't really see much of the sigils in the dark. Um, but there are torches uh, kind of lighting up the outside of it. But as uh, you continue on... He says, uh, so, what the Stoneforge doing here, eh? We're here to help with the war efforts. We're here to turn the tides, like she said. What's, uh, what's the report from the front line here? Well, we've been holding them off pretty well. The only thing is, uh, sometimes at night, uh, we get some air raids. They, they seem to be dropping some sort of barrels of I, I, I believe it to be oil. And uh, that's what uh, all the smoke be from, eh? You know what? Uh, speaking of which, I didn't actually put any smoke on this map. Be the um, smoke smell a little bit stronger. It seems that the air raids have definitely burnt some buildings in the area. However, it looks like this back half is mostly untouched. He says, well, I mean, we get little wandering zombies and skeletons coming up. Uh, we don't get really many losses from that. But we do have some... Uh, some problem with the air raids. They seem to, to firebomb us. Fuck, now I'm just screwing up all the accents, putting them all together. Jesus Christ. But you know, you're no, doing that's not it either. God damn it. I completely lost it altogether. Um he says uh Well, mate, it just so happens that, uh, I'm sure the, uh, what's his name? I made a, I mean, I didn't make a stat block, but I made him a name. Where is it? Allies. I'm sure Marshal Garand Velius would be looking to, to talk to you first thing in the morning. Uh. Normally, the air raids would have started about an hour ago, so I think he's probably catching up some snooze about now. Uh, could I show you all to some... some lodgings for the night? That would be excellent. Yeah, we, we need a place to set up and chat a little bit more before we head out for sure. One question though are there any stories coming in from any of the the scouts or anything 
um, that seems off. You know, I know you said some skeletons and things, but you know, anything which which comes to mind, any any different types of creatures or things which we might be uh, that we could prepare for. Spare no detail. Okay, he is going to make some. Uh, you know what? I have to go do another map, which you guys can't see quite yet. So give me a moment. Look at this. Look at this shit. Look at this. They're in for a fucking treat. Well, mate, it seems that I've mostly been, uh, we mostly hear about just zombie skeletons and, uh, the very large bot creatures. Uh, that seem to carry the barrels in and then some, uh, some strange red creatures, uh, looking a little bit like a tiefling, but with more wings and nastiness to it seem to explode them before they hit the city and it kind of spreads fire around that's uh that's been our biggest issue v very large bat like creatures that sounds terrible we'll have to keep an eye out for them and figure out a way to help out We might look for the source. I wouldn't imagine they could fly too far with a heavy load. Good thought. Hi. I mean, we'd be happy for every bit of help we can get from the, the Stormforge, you know. Now I turn Newfoundland. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> it's an eclectic region. Yeah, bro's Pick just one. got all of the accents, man. He's a traveler. Um, he says, uh, well, I mean, uh, what kind of lodgings y'all be looking for? Um, are, are we fine with modest? Lodgings. We also need lodgings for the uh, griffins, though. So uh, they'll need some sort of like stable, not close to horses, is our recommendation. I mean, they uh, they be eating like horses, that. no? They will eat the horses, so do not put them with the horses. <laughs> but they do need to be in some sort of stable, like lodging. Suck. Let me see. Dude, I swear I found one that had like. Hey, there we go. There's the NPC table. All right, so tell me they got a tavern one on this page, right? Objects, items, plot. No. Sub settlement. Settlements. Aha! Ah, tavern of pub names. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. All right. Dwarven Nail House, no. Hunter's Lodge, Mining Town, no. He says, you know what? Nah. I got the place for you. Come with me. And he's going to lead you guys, uh through this place and as you do he says this this we call the lost on gate nope now i'm going scottish just give me a headache this here is the lost down gate this uh basically how the city's set up is we got uh our east and west gate and then we got the east blockade which he kind of points to some towers you can see in the distance through the torch lights that are on them. And then we got this one here. This is our last stand gate. We call it that because if uh, they get through here, we either run or we make our last stand. But he continues to lead you on. Down to here. Um... As you walk through, uh, he says, uh, 
just to the east side there, that, that's the marketplace. It's, it's closed now, but, uh, you know, this is a great location for you. He says, uh, I'll inform uh, the marshal that, that you're all here. And he kind of puts you up in this uh, one down here. This square building. It says, uh, this is generally our, what is this, section four. Says, uh, this is generally uh, one we 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 keep for, you know, our most valued guests. And well, you're the Stormforge after all, eh? Thank you kindly. Very well. Well, um, if you, you look over there, and he says, uh, you can definitely see it from your second story window. A big square building. And he kind of points at this one here. You uh, you go there in the morning, that's that's our rock guard command. Yeah, if you'd be asking for... Uh, Marshal Velius, I'm sure he'll see you. Uh, we can probably use all the help we can get. But uh, I think tonight, tonight's restful. And as you guys walk through the town, you realize there's next to nobody on the streets. Um, Richter, from what you know of the city, since you live close to it, this city is this rock guard garrison. 90% of the people here are soldiers. Uh, this place was built um, in a effort between both Grim Gallier and Rex Centrum uh, of the Dwendillion Empire. So this is basically just uh, a fortified military base uh, slash holding. You know, um, he would have told you that up here in Section Eight, you've got your basically your civilians, the one who works the shops and and you know the the crafting area and whatnot. And this area is generally used for crafting area as well as the market. Uh, let's see, up in five, we have, you know, the officers, uh, quarters up here. You've got the, uh, everyday soldier living quarters, uh, both 2A and 2B. And I think that's about it. Uh, it says if, if you're looking for places of worship, uh, we've got a hall of the, the hall of the auspicious. That is uh, the temple for Avandra. Uh, the one back here, uh, that's uh, Order of Law. It's a uh, Arathis temple that uh, tends to... A lot of the soldiers worship there. You know, law and order and all that. And then he points uh, not far from where you guys are now. He points to this one here. That one there is uh, uh, Temple of Moradin. House of Creation. Most of the, uh, a lot of the civilians here uh, worship there. You know, being chefs and and blacksmiths and leather workers and, and so on. But uh, if you need anything, my name is... Give me a minute. I just found the NPC one. Where is it? Finally found NPCs. I don't need heroes. I just need a soldier, motherfucker. Gladiator. Soldiers, also, what was the, the head guy's name? Marshal V. Uh, Marshal Garad Velius. He's a friendly, so I can show it to you guys. I don't give a shit. Noise. Let's see. We got tables with. Got it. Got a. And our features. No, I just need the NPC, not the whole fucking company. Give me a name, you whore. Somebody make me up a name. 
I, I'm over names tonight, bruh. Just, just need a name. Anybody Flint. a name. What? What kind of character? Flint. Flint? Flint. It says, I, I'm Private Flint. He is, by the way, a human. They've been going, doing good work out here, Private Flint. Looks like this place is holding on for what it's worth. Good work. Thank you, sir. I'm I'm glad to hear it. Uh, I I need to get back to my post though. So you, you all have a good night. I give him one platinum. Oh no, sir. No, no. I thank you. I I can't take it. it it's my duty. If you take oh, gold fair. for extra gold than what your duty is worth, I mean that's it's a problem with morals right there, you know. And they're the fucking accent changed again. <laughs> You're a good lad. I'll drop this off at the local pub to to get some rounds for anyone looking to, to take a load off. Back to work. He gives you a salute, and he heads off. So. As you guys explore this place, it is, uh, it's actually kind of fancy. Uh, it's probably fancier than what the rest of you are used to. Not that you couldn't afford it, but, uh, you guys tend to go for the, the, the lower hanging fruit when it comes to inns and such. And the amount of time you guys have spent on the road and whatnot, um, you guys each find your own room and they are rather lavish. Um, the Duendelian colors are everywhere. Blue and gold. Um, although, as you guys pick up anything that looks a little gold, uh, if you were to scratch it, you can definitely tell that uh, it's been painted gold. A lot of it is just pewter. Um, on the uh, Some of them end up being like brass. But all the tapestries are um, true to their color. You know, they're not painted tapestries. Blue and gold hangs everywhere. Um, your beds are extremely comfortable. And as it is uh, roughly uh, almost midnight. Is there anything you guys wish to do in this particular house? I'm exploring or fucking... Spoon breaker, be- would you like to stick some more coins up your ass? No, not not tonight. No, not We've tonight. We've been traveling. My ass is a little sore. All right, that, that, that's fair. Where did we leave the griffins? In which uh, stable? Oh, that's right. I forgot. You, you even mentioned him, and I still forgot. He mentions, uh, fortunately, we, we, we don't really have stables for griffins, but, uh, I mean... It just so happens that your roof actually has a uh, a flat roof on it. Um, also, like we are right in between two mountains. I mean, it's it's my understanding that griffins prefer like you know being out in uh, out in nature. No, I don't think you understand what you're getting yourself into with that kind of statement, buddy. <laughs> uh. Also, given the frequency of attacks around here, it probably isn't a good idea to leave on the tenth griffins. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just also thinking we don't want to have them flying around and, you know, enemies see that we're here either, right? So I think we should just uh, tuck them into bed on the roof. You might need some uh, hay or something for them to sleep on to make bedding, and uh, the other half of their ration and uh i'm ready to head for bed i mean there's also another option that you all seem to forget every time we could put them into our vessels but a lot of them don't like going into the vessel no actually, we can give them the option though. none of them have, have complained they, they basically say it's like a time stop for them okay well i'll give vulch the option he can either sleep on the roof or he can uh, spend some time in the vessel. Well, I mean, I 
I do enjoy air. I mean, doesn't matter. No, honestly, none none of your girlfriends care either way. Uh, they they like the freedom, but uh, at the same time, like, although they are would usually be apex predator, um, considering that uh, at least one of your griffins has died two or three times. They're also not objected to safety at this point. All right, Sleek, get your ass in the hole. Oh my god. Get in the flask. Sleek just like leaps and gives up. Oh yeah. As he flies towards your flask. He he doesn't do that, but he 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 comes towards you and kind of touches the end of the flask and gets sucked I in the flask. I felt him do it. It's okay. You don't have to <laughs> backtrack any any bit. So I think I'm new to these flasks, unless I've missed something. Um, I believe everybody should have gotten one. Uh, well, oh, the new Stormforged might not have any. That is right. Uh, they would have been delivered to you guys um, when you guys got your griffins. I probably forgot to give that to you. But they are in... Oh, apparently Phoenix is the only one with one for some reason. Okay. All players. Uh, nobody. Yeah, can I, I didn't know what we were talking about. I just like it. All right, so um, again, item handouts, magic items, iron flask of safety. Got it. From the description, I will definitely opt for the iron flask of safety. After rations. Yeah, like like normally, if it was like safe times or like you know how they were in. Oh shit! That was such an overboard. That is so much whiskey. Um, do it, <laughs> bro. Um, normally, if you know, like you guys were in Grim Gallier, like the they like the the freedom of the outdoors, but given the fact like this is so wide open, like uh, they heard about the the attacks coming in, that they would be like, yeah, we'll we'll take the the flask and just have like basically a time stop, really. But as you guys pull them all into flasks, um, and you guys take off all your traveled gear, set it aside, you curl up in the comfiest bed you have ever been in in your life. And you all drift off to sleep. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we are going to end for tonight. Give me a minute to outro the stream, and uh, I'll be back. Hell yeah. So, let's see here. Uh, boom. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so glad I had so many people tonight. Thank you, Sprigleaf, for the raid. Thank you, Snowbubble, for the raid. Greatly appreciated, both of you um thank you for uh i believe i saw another follow and a um and a subscription i am always grateful guys i really appreciate it uh tonight has been a blast i hope you enjoyed the uh the sad funeral and uh the events well that is going to be it for me for tonight but you know what i have 37 viewers i I gotta see if there's somebody we can raid. Uh, and while I do that, I will tell you what I got coming. So, for tomorrow, we have a four-player BG3 game. Um, you know what? I think I might have somebody that... Yes, it is. Okay. So, I got who we're going to raid. So, stick around for a few minutes. Uh, we do have uh, a four-player Baldur's Gate 3 game tomorrow. Uh, which uh, the person playing Spoonbreaker, the person playing Sulamin, and the person playing Wabu is running Baldur's Gate 3 with me. We are in Act 3. We have probably at least four to five sessions left before the end of the game. Um, and uh, I've also been playing a lot of Escape from Tarkov. I'm not good. But I'm trying, and that's what matters, right? So I hope to see you guys coming up soon. Um... This coming week is mostly video games. This this weekend I just finished is mostly D&D. Next weekend is mostly games. So we're going to have 
Tarkov on Thursday night. I do have one D&D game uh, I'm playing on Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Saturday at 1.30 p.m. I plan on doing some Tarkov. Um, Sunday at 7.30 p.m. I plan on doing Tarkov. And Monday we will be doing another BG3 game with four players. So I hope to see you all there. And I am just going to do this real quick.